1848 may have the appearances, please. Good morning, Judge. Leslie Basie and Zach Wichell appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter appearing as authorized representative for my client. <clears throat> I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for the discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and do not consent to being called that name for the record. All right, thank you. That is noted. Uh, the record will also reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes, uh, specifically a suit and tie and a mask as well. And don't get safe to be in court then. I understand, sir. All right, I do want to put on the record I gave the parties this morning. It's an excerpt from uh, a judicial bench book on opening statements. It's about a page and a half. Um, I thought it would be helpful to provide to Mr. Brooks as he uh, puts together his opening statement. Um, it has reference to uh, some Supreme Court rules, SCR, some case law, talks about the manner and purpose, scope, um, and other things. And uh, as I indicated yesterday, sir, um, the I like to call it the roadmap. Uh, it's referred to here as a framework so that the jury can better understand and evaluate evidence. It must also be um, based on the law and the evidence you believe is properly admissible. Um, I'm going to further advise you at the time when you do make your opening statement uh, that it not reference subject matter jurisdiction. That is, despite what I know you believe to be to the contrary, it is not a requirement to be proven in this case. Um, it is not a factual or legal argument that is accurate and therefore I'm prohibiting you from referencing that during either opening statements or closing arguments. Uh, um, with that, I believe for the record, there's... Is this, is this the, which you're referring to this the page and a half is from my judicial bench book. I thought it would be helpful to you as, so that you have a better awareness and understanding of the manner and purpose of an opening statement. This is what guides me as I um, preside over cases. Okay, I accept for value and return for value these documents. Um, I don't know why the reference to subject matter jurisdiction in the opening statement. I, um, pretty aware that that wouldn't be part of an opening or closing statement. I, I don't. Okay, great. I don't get why that. I wanted relevant. to make the record clear. So I appreciate you indicating to me you, that you're aware of that. Even though subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven on the record and should sure, be addressed. It does not need to be proven on the it, record. It's it, established by law and by the fact that as my written decision indicates, uh, commenced when the com criminal complaint was filed in this case. It's conferred by constitution and by statute. And who was, it, who was the uh, complaint filed by? Because subject matter jurisdiction Sir, has yet I'm to be proven. I'm not going to go down this record. path today. I'm just advising you, you cannot reference that in your opening I mean, statement. That was something I've already had the common sense to know, but also subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven for the record all right uh next topic then i believe the state has Should filed be proven a for motion the by the prosecution the objection is noted it is not legally sound it's overruled it's definitely legally sound all right uh, attorney i'm going to turn to attorney upper i believe they filed a motion this morning uh, has it been pulled through i probably just need to refresh but man, was served on Mr. Brooks last night in the jail, Your Honor. Um, All right, go I ahead. You can make. I didn't. I didn't look at the document. Uh, 
accept and return for, accept for value, return for value the document. I didn't look at it. Um, so I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. All right, well, Attorney Apper, it's your motion. I'll hear from you. Your Honor, uh, we are moving to amend the information with respect to one word in the entire document. We're changing, we're asking to change the location of count 76. The information reads, as it uh, reads right now, it reads at Frame Park. We're asking to change that to near Frame Park. Uh, we believe that that's a more consistent um, statement that aligns with the testimony of victim PPP, Erica Patterson, as she testified in this trial. Uh, we're not asking to change any criminal charges. We're not asking to change any dates. Uh, it's, I think, a very small change in the charging document. The defendant has been on notice of the facts of this transaction. Um, it's reflected in a number of police reports and Ms. Patterson's recorded statement, which the defendant has copies of. And so uh, I don't think that there's any grounds for a claim of prejudice by this change. And we're asking to move forward with that amendment to the information. Right, thank you. Any uh, position on that, sir? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, for the record, um, there were originally two charges associated with this with this one party, and um, these charges have been charged for the better part of a year. I, I feel that if there was essentially one word that needed to be changed. It had, it's been more than ample time for it to be changed. Even after uh, one of the charges was dismissed, it could have been, that topic could have been visited at that time for it to change. I, I don't I don't think one change in one word at this point really has any, any bearing on the testimony or the actual charge. I, I don't understand why a motion needs to be heard about one word is, is think kind of at this point kind of a, a moot point it, it's been charged like this for a year basically but the language hasn't ever been a uh, reference to being changed before uh, yesterday so what, what is the significance of this now at this point Thank you, sir. Court is guided by uh, section 971.29 sub 2 of the Wisconsin statutes, which provides at the trial, the court may allow amendment of the complaint, indictment, or information to conform to the proof where such amendment is not prejudicial to the defendant. Uh, case law states that when an amendment to the charging document does not change the crime charged, and when the alleged offense is the same and the results from the same transaction, there is no prejudice to the defendant. State versus Wickstrom, 118 Wisconsin 2nd, 339, found at page 348. It's a Court of Appeals case from 1984. Uh, and also, I point the parties to State versus Durango, 229 Wisconsin 2nd, 1. And State versus Gerard, 189 Wisconsin 2nd, 505. Um, the First of those two cases is a court of appeals case from 1999, and then the second of that of those referenced is from the Supreme Court from 1995. I'd also point the parties to State versus Frey, 178 Wisconsin 2nd, 729, a court of appeals case uh, from 1993. Um, as far as whether this is a moot issue or not, I'll find that it is ripe for determination by this court to hear this motion, and that is uh, because the jury uh, ultimately uh, will be instructed, similarly to what the jurors were instructed at the beginning of the case, uh, the charges are read, those are based off of the information, um, and this proposed amendment does conform to the proof. Um, there is no prejudice to Mr. Brooks, it does not change uh, the charge in any way. Um, it is still the same offense. Uh, it's still from the same uh, general information that was indicated in the criminal complaint. 
Uh, so for all of those reasons, I will grant the state's request to amend the information and the state may file that document uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I have a question about that. So this same, uh, the same person is scheduled to testify again. What if something changes in the testimony? I'm not going to answer that, sir. It would require me to speculate on what that situation might be and to give an advisory opinion, which I will not do. But what happens if, if that happens? I'm not going to answer that, sir. I can't. You're asking me to give an advisory decision. I'm not going to do that. I'm not allowed to do that, actually. Okay, so we dealt with that then. no sense. The state has not rested yet. Uh, will the state anticipate calling any other witnesses? Yes, Your Honor, as indicated yesterday, we do intend to recall Detective Casey to the stand, and I'd like to uh, make a record in that regard, please. Go ahead. Your Honor, uh, Detective Casey did testify once for the state's uh, early in the presentation of the matter. His focus at that point was largely on uh, assisting the jury in understanding the layout of the parade route, um, giving background and uh, contextual information to the jury, um, the different parade units that were impacted, uh, what, you know, what they looked like. We showed several videos with Detective Casey just for background and context purposes. He then went on to describe his personal interaction with the SUV as it came through the intersection of White Rock and Maine. And uh, essentially, um, that was the, the bulk of his testimony uh, during his first testimony. We're seeking to recall him now. This is not unusual. It is commonly done in cases. We never excused him from his subpoena. We never asked for him to be excused from his subpoena. We always intended to recall him. We did this so that we can efficiently present the information to the jury. Um, the types of questions we have for him now go more to the investigation itself and his role as the lead detective in this case. There will not be duplication or repetitive <coughs> questions. I'm not going back to the corner of White Rock in Maine with Detective Casey during this uh, round of testimony. We want to ask him uh, essentially about how some of the victims along the parade route were identified. We want to ask him about um, some of the topics that have been addressed throughout the course of the state's case as far as identification of the vehicle and identification of the driver. And um, we need to still introduce the um, certified bail forms from Milwaukee County for the two bail jumping counts. So he will be asked about that. I estimate my direct examination of Detective Casey would be about 20 minutes. So this is not um, going to be repetitive. It's information, again, that he has as the lead detective in the case to, uh, to assist the jury in understanding some of the things on the back end that he was involved in, not uh, his role at the parade. So we are, um, we have been very efficient in our presentation. I believe Your Honor would agree with that. Um, we're not wasting time here, but we just have a few more questions to wrap this up. Right. Any position from you, sir? And yes, I do. And I'm going to start with what was just said, that um, the prosecution feels that they've been efficient in their presentation. So it, it, it seems like to me uh, an attempt to get more questions in that, that could have been asked in the first place. If, if Your Honor recalls, um, Detective Casey was... Um, testifying for quite some time to the point that we actually had to have a break before I can cross-examine Detective Casey, if you recall. He was up there quite some time. That was more than enough time for uh, any other foundations to be laid, any, any questions to be asked at that time. Um, and also, from 
my recollection, he was asked to be excused. So, essentially having him start off and then end it, I feel like it's an attempt to get questions that was maybe forgotten to be asked, answered. Um, and essentially what, what more could be gained by a second testimony from Detective Casey? What, what more could be gained that hasn't already been learned? We learned about uh, vehicles and uh, identification uh, by numerous witnesses. We've, 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 we've been through the, uh, the uh, inspection of the vehicle. We've been through uh, uh, DNA analysis of the vehicle. We've been through uh, numerous things in regards to the vehicle. Uh, even the uh, even the uh, reconstruction uh, testimony, we, we, we've been through all of that. Um, seems like nothing more than to get extra questions answered that could have been asked from the get-go. As seeing as how he, he was up there for quite some time and, and, and none of those issues were raised at that time. What would be the significance at this point? Um, when it's essentially I, I should be already presenting uh, my defense at this point in, in, in trial. I don't see the relevancy of it and to my knowledge he was excused from his subpoena. So was, Thank was you, sir. Relevancy? Thank you, sir. The court has discretion under nine oh six eleven. Um, it's a statute I've quoted with frequency during the course of these proceedings. Um, I've listened to the state's offer of proof. I've listened to uh, the objections made by the defendant. Um, in my discretion, I am going to allow Detective Casey to be recalled uh, for the reasons laid out by the state. Um, as I understand his proposed testimony today, it is not to rehash uh, topics that uh, he was questioned about initially. Uh, this has to do with his investigation and role uh, subsequent to the initial contact um, with Mr. Brooks at the beginning of the parade route. And uh, as the state indicated, uh, we'll address certain things, including um, identification uh, related to the vehicle of the driver throughout the investigation, identification of certain victims, uh, in addition, there are two additional charges for which the state has not yet presented testimony, so it's proper for those as well. It's relevant, and um, I will allow it for those reasons. So the state will be able to recall Detective Casey, and we'll have that done, obviously, when the jury is brought out. Any other preliminary issues, then, from the state? Um, Your Honor, just um, I am working on going through our um, list of exhibits. And I will work with your clerk to make sure that everything that I'm showing was admitted and accepted by the court um, is what she has so that we can clear that up before we actually rest. All right. Thank you. Anything preliminary from you, sir? Yeah, just a quick question about the uh, last uh, thing again. Would I will be able to recross examine Oh, right? yes, you will. And is essentially anything left off limits to my cross or what I may limit depending on uh, where we go if the questions deal with what he testified to previously it's primarily to cross-examine um, based on the new testimony however 90611 also says this a witness may be cross-examined on any matter relevant to any issue in the case including credibility it does say in the interest of justice the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct so i'll give you some leeway um, and i'll trust the state will make appropriate objections and i'll rule on them if and when they're made because i'm not intending to go too much back into the previous testimony but 
I think it may, a few points from the earlier testimony may come into fair. play, and I just wanted to make sure. I think that's fair. That wouldn't be a problem. I think that's fair, sir. Um, also, uh, really quick, um, I did look over some uh, information provided by the prosecution as, as far as uh, uh, the pretrial offer that I did not have knowledge of until, I don't know if that was, was today Thursday. I don't know if that was Monday or Friday or Monday, one of those days. Um, I'll put together, uh, well, started to, I, I won't say it's completed. That wouldn't be fair to say. Um, I've put together a, a, or started to put together a counter offer. So I just wanted to advise the court that I was putting that together. All right. Thank you, sir. When, if and when you do provide that to the state, please let me know so we can make a record of that. All right. Anything else? not then we'll have the jury brought out um we do have one last uh large map here and you're on i'm going to ask to put up and face backwards like we did the other day all right go ahead since the jury's not here Thank you. Thank you everyone please be seated and good morning ladies and gentlemen of the jury i know it's a little chilly in here i'm not sure if that will change now that we're all in here if at any time that temperature is too cold for you let me know and we can have that adjusted all right uh, attorney opera you may call your next witness thank you your honor the state would recall detective tom casey <coughs> good morning detective casey please make your way to the witness stand when you get there please remain standing raise your right hand and Teresa will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Please state your first and last names for the record. Thomas Casey. <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Attorney Albert. Thank you. Uh, Detective Casey, uh, I'd like to begin by asking you to um, refer to the item behind you. There's a large poster board there. If you could please uh, place that on the easel and identify the exhibit number for the court. It's exhibit number 15. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Were you the uh, individual who created this map, State's Exhibit Number 15? Yes, I did. Okay. And I would like you to um, talk a little bit about uh, how victims were identified in this case. Objection leading. Um, oral, foundational, the witness may answer. So, at least initially, can you tell us, like, in the, the day or two after the parade, what happened? Objection leading. Overrule. You may answer. So initially um, that night we knew that the victims were taken to different hospitals um, around the area, uh, generally five different hospitals. So at the beginning um, we began by having detectives assigned to each hospital. Um, Waukeshaumar Hospital received the most patients so they also had a lieutenant that was assigned there as a team leader. As the patients came in they were identified by detectives. Um, the hospitals also provided us with lists of patients that they had and we went through those lists and tried to identify people that came in and were being treated. And then eventually were there follow-up interviews conducted with these individuals? Yes, there were. What if the individual was a person under the age of 18? Objection uh, leading. Overruled, you may answer. If the person was a minor under 18, then we would reach out to their parents, talk to the parents. Um, some of the kids were able to talk to us, but we got the majority of their statement from their parents. Okay. And do you believe that the names on Exhibit 15 uh, truly reflect all the injured victims that you were able to identify in the course of this investigation, sir? Objection. Uh, no, I do not. Hold on. There's been an objection. Um, it's overruled. And um, the witness will repeat his answer. No, I do not. Can you explain that? Objection leading. Oh, overall. J just because of the scope of the investigation, we had so many people that were hurt, we had to come up with some kind of parameters to limit the people that we would call victims. Uh, one of those parameters is that they had to receive treatment at a hospital. Uh, another one is that they had to be in the street when their injuries occurred. So there are some people that um, <coughs> were injured, maybe on the sidewalk, trampled by the cr crowd. <coughs> Or received the injuries that they didn't get hospital care from you know and uh, unfortunately I learned later on there's even a person that was in the band that somehow we missed her being reported that she received the broken leg so there are some that are not on the map but all the people that have been charged are on the map so you mentioned people on the sidewalk we did have some spectators testify in the trial correct objection leading um, overruled foundational Correct, but they were more in the roadway or on the curb, not on the sidewalk or not running away from the incident when it happened. I see. So, was, in your mind, when you were um, leading this investigation, trying to identify victims, what was the importance of the SUV in the injuries that were caused? Objection leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. Why were the spectators that are on this map included? Because they were directly contacted by the SUV that came down the street. If a person were injured because they were trampled by the crowd, are they on this map? We exclude both. Um, overruled the detective may answer. Those people were excluded from the map. There were some people like that, right? Yes, yes there were. Okay. Um, Please make Sorry. sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll allow his answer to stand. Um, next question. All right. I'd like to um, put up for you exhibit number 32, which has been previously identified. I'm sorry, admitted. I'm sorry, you said 32? Yes. You said yes. 32? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just missed it. <laughs> Just to the witness or published because it's been received? Yes, we are, we are going to publish this, Your Honor. Go ahead. Permission okay. granted. Okay, thank you. And while we're waiting for it to come up in the jury box. Um, I don't have it on my screen. It, it may take a second. Hold on. If it's not, let's check the cables. No, it's on. We don't have it either. <laughs> I can see it. The witness can see it. Mm -hmm. um, go. I'll just. Thank you for letting us know, sir. Just the front table's back table's on, Your Honor. 
Um, hold on. I'm going to stop source for a second. Anything? Yeah? You can see it on the screen though, right, sir? On the there's screen, obviously, on the far side of the courtroom and then to your right. It's always better on here because I, I, I understand. We'll get our tech guy over here to look at it, but it's previously been received and we can see it on the two other monitors. So for now, we're going to continue. If there's anything new, I'll make sure to pause. Go ahead. Uh, Detective Casey, I want to focus your attention specifically as to the extreme dance team. We heard um, testimony about several of the girls on the team being struck and injured. Do you remember that testimony, sir? Yes, I do. Um, overruled, it's foundational. The answer may stand. Do you know if there were other people associated with the extreme dance team that were injured? Objection, speculative. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. And do you know their, the names of these people? Objection, yep. hearsay. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. What were their names, please? Kathleen Palmeyer. Speculation. Um, overruled, he may answer. Go ahead, sir. Kathleen Palmeyer. Jennifer Stover and Mitchell Lampine. What was their role with the dance team? Uh, Jennifer and Kathleen were support people. Um, Jennifer's daughter was marching the parade. And then Mitchell was there to hand out candy with his stepmom. Okay. I'm going to uh, now play. It's still not being displayed on our tables, Your Honor, but. It is displayed on the two large monitors in the courtroom. <coughs> so do I have permission to proceed? Which exhibit? This is 32. Oh, yes. If we get to a new one that hasn't previously been received, then yes. I will okay. pause to get All the right. tech people in. All right. And Go ahead. It's irrelevancy. Overruled. The bailiff confirmed it's on in the jury box, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Please play. Um, from the uh, 32 second mark, I'm sorry, 35 second mark to 47 seconds. How long is the, how long is the exhibit? Looks like it's a minute 23 according to what I can see in my monitor. It is 123 total. We're only playing this uh, 12 second clip from 35 to 47. Thank you. And please pause. Do you see any of the individuals you were just testifying about enter the screen, sir? Objection, speak with you. Overruled, he may answer. Yes, I do. Could you identify them uh, by using the touch screen? Objection, lady. Overruled, he may answer. You're going to draw one big circle? Okay. It has two individuals. It has Jennifer and Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen has the red jacket on. And directly to her left would be Jennifer in a black jacket. Okay. A little hard to see right now, but as yeah, they... It's very hard to see. Um, as keep they walk, going. Could you see two people walking there, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, please clear the screen and continue playing. And pause. And I'm sorry, because I can't see the counter, Your Honor. One, uh, it is at 44 seconds. 44 seconds. Thank you. Paused at 44. Do you see anybody else that you just testified to in the uh, in the video at this point, sir? Objection. Speculation. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I do. And who is that? Lee. Mitchell. Objection. Overruled. Mitchell Lampine. Please circle Mitchell. Do you know Mitchell's approximate age? Objection, speculative. Overruled. I believe he's about 10. Okay. 
All right, we can uh, take down 32. Did um, this video goes on to show the red SUV drive through the extreme dance team, correct? Objection leading. Um, it's foundational. Here. Overruled. It's foundational. It's previously been received. Go ahead. Yes, it does. To your knowledge of this video, sir, did uh, those individuals, Mitchell and uh, Ms. Stover and Ms. Pellmeyer, remain along the left side of the road there as the SUV <coughs> went through? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. They were hit by the vehicle and then moved to the left. Let's take a pause for a second. We yes. Our IT experts. Hopefully, I can get this figured out. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Go ahead. Could you put something on the screen that's okay to you for the moment? Next one will be 132 if you want. Oh, I'm sorry, 55. It's on our screen. It's on now. Hold on, let's make sure. Do you have it now, yeah. sir? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Great. It's on the. It's on mine. It's on the witness. All right. right. Just Thank like you. real life, you call the help desk and they right. show up and it. Oh, now it works. Yeah. Jury monitors. Jury monitors were working. It's not. Uh, hold on. Let's make sure it was just working. There's a delay. It can take 30 seconds. What, what is it? Is this this one? Uh, this is 55. All right, it's not very good. We're up and working, and 55 has previously been received. So go ahead. All right. Objection to the relevancy of 55. <coughs> uh, noted. Overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Upper. Uh, Detective Casey, Exhibit 55, uh, can you see at the end of the road there or the top of the screen what unit is involved in Exhibit 55, please? Yes. Please tell us. Objection leading. Overruled. It is the dancing grannies that are approaching from the right. Okay. And. Uh, one of the dancers we have heard testimony that was involved with the grannies was a woman by the name of Lola Hospital. Is that correct? Objection leading. Overruled. It's foundational. The witness may answer. Yes, she was. Is there video showing this hospital being struck by the SUV? Objection leading. <coughs> Sustain this to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Sure. Is the exhibit. You've seen Exhibit 55 before? Yes, I have. Are you able to identify Ms. Hospital? I'm sorry, yes, Lola Hospital in Exhibit 55, sir. Objection, Lee. Overall. Yes, I am. All right. We're going to play the clip, Your Honor, from uh, point, I'm sorry, from four seconds to eight seconds at 50% speed, and it is zoomed in um, on the middle of the road where the dancing grannies are located. All right, go ahead, thank you. Please describe for the jury what you just saw in the video, sir. Objection leading. Overruled. I saw the red SUV <coughs> driving westbound on Main Street, approaching the Dancing Grannies and hitting Lola Hospital and then striking two other Dancing Grannies. When you say hitting Lola Hospital, what did you see? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled. You may answer. I saw the left side of the car come in contact with her and then she, her body moved to her left after. Did Ms. Hospital report any injuries to the Waukesha Police Department? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, she did. <coughs> All right, sir. Uh, I'd like to now ask uh, that Exhibit 118 be 
published for the jury. This has previously been admitted. Permission granted. Objection to the relevancy of 118. It's previously been received. Go ahead. Sir, do you recognize the item shown in Exhibit 118? <coughs> yes, I do. And in addition to the photograph, have you had an opportunity to examine that item or items? Objection, me. Personally. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I have. And uh, Mr. Johnson from the crime lab testified about these items yesterday, but I'd like you to tell the jury what you remember of these items, please. Objection, me. <coughs> the first part of the question. Um, overruled the witness may answer. So this is the red SUV that was used in the parade attack. This is a picture of it taken after. I remember a hood from a white jacket and a hat, a black hat with snowflakes on it being um, Pressed in between the hood and the windshield and the windshield wiper of the vehicle. Objection to it being called in attack. I think that's a, a, a disparaging remark for the record. Your objection is noted and the answer will stand. Um, I will instruct the witness to simply describe what he, he is seeing without further characterizing it as it will be up to the jury to determine the facts in this case. Go ahead. Thank you. When you saw these items on the hood of the red SUV, did you later come to uh, recognize where they may have come from? Objection, lady. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What did you determine? I determined that they were the jacket hood and hat that Virginia Sorensen was wearing while she was walking in the parade. Like to display to the witness only, please, Exhibit 177. This has not yet been received, Your Honor. All right, go ahead, please. Is 177 on your screen, sir? Yes, it is. And. Uh, what do you see in Exhibit 177? Objection, Lee. Overruled. I see two dancing grannies carrying a Milwaukee dancing granny sign, and the woman on the left is Virginia Sorensen, and she's wearing a black hat with snowflakes, wearing a white jacket with a hood on it. Uh, move to admit 177 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection to the relevancy. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 177 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Is that 177? 177, yes. Go ahead. And if the jurors will let me know when it's in the jury box as well, please. All right, thank you. It's there. And again, just so we're clear on the record, please circle Virginia Sorensen in the hat in this picture. Objection, Lee. Overruled. That is Virginia, and then this would be the <coughs> hat and hood that I believe was found on the SUV. Okay. Detective Casey. There were many videos that have been shown to this jury, correct? Objection. Yeah. It's foundational, Your Honor. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, there has been. To your knowledge, are there any videos that display the license plate of the red SUV as it goes along the parade route? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, there are. Is it possible to capture a screenshot from those videos to see the license plate of the red SUV along the parade route? Yes, there are. 
I'd like to uh, display for the witness only <coughs> exhibit 150. Go ahead. Is 150 on your screen, Detective? Not yet. Okay. <coughs> it is now. All right. Do you see uh, Exhibit 150? Yes, I do. Please uh, describe what you see in Exhibit 150. Objection leading. Overruled. I see the red SUV that was driven through the parade route, and it's at the time when it was <coughs> contacting the Waukesha South band members. In that photo, you can read the license plate number. Do you believe this uh, photo is a true and accurate representation of the events of the day? Yes, I do. Move to admit 150 and permission to publish. Objection. Um, how does this go to investigation? Um, overruled. Investigation. Exhibit 150 is received. Permission to publish is granted. <coughs> The image is a little blurry, correct? A tad. Can you please uh, point out the license plates in the photo and read it for the jury? Is it okay if I circle it? Yes. Overruled. You may do so. That is license plate number, and I read ADP 9256. All right. Now I'd like to show to the witness only number 151, please. Go ahead. Please describe 151. Oh, please clear the screen, Madam Clerk. This photo is of the red SUV on the parade route. It's just photo taken just prior to the Barris Logistics float, and the band director is in the lower left-hand side of the video. And it shows the red SUV with the license plate number displayed. Do you believe this photo represents a true and accurate depiction of the events of the day? Yes, I do. Move to admit 151 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. So rather we see. Exhibit 151 is received permission to publish. Granted, the objections noted and overruled. I recall this state saying they had 140 exhibits. How did we get this many? <coughs> Keep going, Attorney Younger. Detective, please describe what you see in uh, 151. I think you did describe it. Strike that. Um, please circle the license plate and read it for the jury. Objection, leave. Overruled. ADP 9256. Thank you. <laughs> it's still not up. Okay, I'm sorry. Gotta wait for the jury. Go ahead. Detective Casey, during your investigation, did you <clears throat> uncover any other videos linking Mr. Brooks to this? Same vehicle with this same license plate. Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. He's leading the witness. I'm overruled as to both counts. You may answer. Yes, we have. Could you describe this video <coughs> for us, please? Objection. Leading. Overruled. There's a video that we obtained from social media that shows Mr. Brooks standing next to the SUV, and you can clearly see the license plate number on the vehicle. I believe the video was taken sometime prior to November 21st, 2021. Okay, I'd like to uh, display for the witness only Exhibit 175, please. Go ahead. Please identify 175. This is a... Uh, Relevancy. Um, overruled. You may answer. This is a photo. There's two individuals in the photo. 
The individual on the left, I know to be the <coughs> person referred to as Daryl Brooks. It displays the a vehicle, a red Ford, and it has the license plate number, which is displayed in the photo. What is the source of this photo? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. We obtained it through social media. Okay, I mean, it, this is a photo versus a video. This is the photo taken from Hold the on. video. <laughs> Um, I understand the objection. It's sustained. It's foundational. This particular question, the witness may answer. Go ahead. This is overruled or sustained? Overruled. <laughs> you said sustained. What did I say? Yes, you did. Sorry. <laughs> I meant it's overruled. The witness may answer. Sorry. I'm taking notes. I was writing the word source, and I think that's why I did that. In any event, go ahead and answer. Sorry about that for any confusion I may have caused. This is a screenshot taken from a video. Uh, move to admit 175 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection to that. Um, what's the relevancy? I, I don't see the alleged defendant in there. Um, your objection is noted. It is overruled. And Exhibit 175 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Where's... Oh, sorry. The jury would also let me know when it's in the jury box monitors or on the jury box monitors. All right, go ahead. Detective Casey, is uh, the person you know is Daryl Brooks in this photograph? Objection, I'll consent to being called their name and leading the witness. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, he is. Please circle or X or mark in some fashion. How do you know that's Daryl Brooks there? His back is to us. Objection, leading. Overruled. I've watched the video in its entirety and I've seen his face in the video. <clears throat> okay, that can go down, please. Detective Casey, in total, how many videos do you think were collected by the Waukesha Police Department during this investigation? Objection, speculative. Overruled. You may answer. We have at least 65 to 75 files. Some of those files contain multiple uh, videos, photos could be 10 each, so I would say probably three to 400 videos we've collected. What were the source of those videos? Um, some of the videos came from uh, different people that were at the parade. Some of them are from city-owned cameras, and some of them are from fixed uh, surveillance photos, uh, fixed surveillance systems um, from businesses that were in downtown Waukesha. Were all of the videos that were available shown to this jury? No, they were not. Overruled. You may answer. No, they were not. Have you personally observed and uh, reviewed each of the video files available in this case, sir? Objection. Speaking Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I have. To your knowledge, sir, did any video ever show a different person behind the driver's wheel of that red SUV. Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. I have never seen anyone driving the vehicle besides the defendant in any of the videos that I looked at. In any of the videos, were you ever able to see multiple people inside the vehicle? Objection is speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. None of the videos that we have looked at showed anyone else in the vehicle. Do any of the videos at any point show the red SUV coming to a stop, a complete stop, along the par parade route? Objection leading is speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. I've never seen a video that shows the vehicle slowing or stopping while it was on the parade route. <clears throat> 
do any of the videos show the driver of the vehicle exit the vehicle to check on a person who had just been struck by the vehicle? Objection leading. Overruled the witness by answer. I never observed in the videos the driver of the vehicle to stop and check or exit the vehicle on anyone. There was testimony earlier in this case about witnesses observing multiple people <coughs> running from the car. Do you remember that? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I remember that. Were there multiple reports like that, sir? Initially, there were some reports like that. When the vehicle was found on Maple Street, you weren't there. Correct, your lady. Oh. Overruled, his answer may stand. Do you know what police activity occurred when the Maple, when the vehicle was found on Maple? Objection, speculative, just stated he wasn't there. Overruled, the witness may answer. He was asked, what does he know? Yes, I do. Please tell the jury what happened when the SUV was found on Maple. Objection, lead. Overruled, the witness may answer. Initially, Officer Moss went. He secured the vehicle, did not find anybody in the vehicle. There was an initial report that saw some other people running from the area of the vehicle. Um, after that information was given back to us, we sent detectives down to the area to investigate further to see if we could corroborate and, and find out if that was true or not. After that investigation, uh, did you have other suspects or just one person? Objection, Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. Uh, Based on the information of what everybody saw on the parade route, and then the detectives that went back down to Maple Avenue where it interviewed the people that reported the people running, our investigation determined that there was only one person in the vehicle and there was no other suspects that we were looking for. At some point in your investigation, Detective Casey, were you given a Ford key? Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I was. What was your understanding as to the source of that key? <clears throat> My understanding that that key was taken from Mr. Brooks when he was taken into custody and turned over to Detective Stern and Detective Carpenter. Objection, I don't consent to be in court that day for the record. Noted. Overruled. How did you get it? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. He just, he just stayed. I got it. Overruled, he may answer. Detective Stern brought me the key the morning after the incident. Did you do anything with the key? Yes, I did. Tell the jury what you did, please. Objection, leading. Overruled. At that point, the vehicle was at the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department Secure Storage Facility. Um, Mr. Johnson was over there uh, processing the vehicle. I went there and I took the key with me and I checked the vehicle to see if the key would work in the car. What did you find? Objection leading. Overruled. I found that the key worked the door locks to unlock the car. I also put the key in the ignition and it turned the ignition lock. Thank you. Detective Casey, you've heard uh, testimony about the manner in which the defendant was identified by the name of Daryl Brooks. Do you recall that testimony, sir? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. He's leading the witness. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Did you endeavor to verify the identification of the subject you had arrested for this incident? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Yes, I have. 
did you verify his identity by the name of Daryl Brooks? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Will you? Or rule the witness may answer. Yes, I have. How did you do that? Objection, Lee. Overruled. There are a couple different ways. Uh, one way is when a person is taken into custody, we take their fingerprints. We check that against other records that are kept by the state. Those fingerprints matched Daryl Brooks. I've also spoken to three women that he has child children with. They verify that that is na his name that he has always gone by. I have also spoken to his mother, which states that that's the <coughs> name that he has gone by always. I'd like to put on the screen for the witness only exhibit 88. Go ahead. Do you see exhibit 88, sir? Yes, I do. Objection to this was the relevancy. Overruled. Go ahead. Grounds for the overruled. Relevant. In what way is it relevant? Two of the counts alleged in this case. Go ahead. Can you please identify Exhibit 88, sir? This is a bail bond through Milwaukee County Circuit Court for Darrell Edward Brooks, the date of birth of 221-82. To your knowledge, uh, was Mr. Brooks on bail through a Milwaukee County case on the date of November 21, 2021? Objection, Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, he was. And what is the date of this bail form? Please uh, believe it's near the bottom. The date on the bottom Objection, is... Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. 221 of 2021. <sighs> Was Mr. Well, strike that. By classification, can you tell us the level of charges that Mr. Brooks was pending on for this bail? Objection. You've Over already made a ruling on it. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. All the charges that I see in here are felonies. To your knowledge, was this bail in full force in effect on November 21 of 2021, sir? Objection. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, it was. And in the middle of the form, do you see the conditions of bail that were set upon Mr. Brooks? Objection, leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. And I'm looking under paragraph B, the third bullet. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Could you please read that bail condition to the jury? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. The state defendant shall not commit any crime. Thank you. Move to admit number 88, Your Honor. Objection. Exhibit 88 is received. I'd like to display for the... already to how's that coming into evidence. Uh, overruled and permission to publish. I'm sorry, I did not seek to publish this, Your Honor. Oh, all right, turn that off. I request the legal finding of fact for that. The objection is noted. It's overruled. <clears throat> Continue, Attorney Offer. Thank you. I'd like to display for the witness only Exhibit 89. Go ahead. Sir, can you please identify 89? Objection. Overruled. Overruled. This is a this has been speculated, uh, stipulated to as well. How's it happening? How's it being admitted? The objections noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. I request a legal finding of fact for that too, Your Honor. Noted. Overruled. Go ahead. This is a bail bond through Milwaukee County Circuit Court for Daryl Edward Brooks with the date of birth of 221 of 1982. Is this a different case than uh, what was displayed in Exhibit 88? Objection, Lee. 
uh, overruled. <coughs> yes, it is. Are you able to make any observations about the level of charges uh, related to this case, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. It appears that there's four charges, two of which are felonies. Okay. And on the bottom of the form, can you tell the date that this bail was issued? Objection leading. Overruled. Say it's 11 11 of 2021. The uh, directing your attention again to that same location in the middle of the page under paragraph B, the third bullet. Could you please read the conditions of release that were set by the court in that case? Objection Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. Defendant shall not commit any crime. To your knowledge, sir, was this bail in full force and effect on November 21 of 21? Objection statement to you, Lee. Overruled as to both. The witness may answer. Yes, it was. <coughs> Finally, sir, I'd like to uh, put up one last uh, item for you or two items. One second, please. I'd like to display for the witness only Exhibit 13. What's the relevancy of this? How does it save any foundation to testimony? Oh. Oh. Give the state some leeway to establish that. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, do you recognize uh, the, well, can you tell <coughs> if Exhibit 13 is a video, sir? Yes, it is. Okay. Have you seen this video before, sir? Objection the Overruled. Still relevancy. Um, Where's the relevancy? The state is asking the foundational questions. The objection's a bit premature. Um, I'll take it under advisement. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Yes, I have. What does this video depict? Objection lead. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection speculative. Overruled. Go ahead. This video depicts the backyard at 4014 North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. It also, that's the ad address of Dawn Woods, the mother of Daryl Brooks. And on the, low, on the lower left-hand corner, you can see a Ford Escape. In the lower Check right. Uh, I move to strike that. How, how does he know? <coughs> Um, the objection is noted, overruled. You can ask him on cross-examination. You can question him about that. Go ahead. In the bottom right-hand corner of the exhibit, do you see a date and time stamp for this video, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, I do. What does it say? It says 11 slash 21 dash 2021, and then it says 13 colon 26 colon 18. What, is, what do those numbers represent, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. To me, it means that the video was taken on November 21st, 2021 at 1.26 p.m. And uh, do you believe this video is a true and accurate representation of the events of that afternoon at that location, sir? Objection um, Sustained. If you could lay a little more foundation. Sure. Please. How did you uh, come into possession of this video, sir? The defendant's mother provided it to us. And uh, do you know approximately when it was obtained? Objection, speculative. Overruled. The evening of November 21st, 2021. Do you know if uh, the defendant's mother was cooperative with police in providing the video? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, she was. Do you know if the video was provided to police when asked? Objection. Overruled. Yes, it was. 
Do you have any reason to believe that the video was altered or modified in any way before it was provided to police? I do not. Move to admit 13, Your Honor, and permission to publish. Objection. Where's the rally you see? Noted. Overruled. Exhibit 13 is received. Permission to publish is granted. For the record, this is a video. It's 49 seconds in duration. We're going to play it in full. There is no audio, and it will be played at normal speed. Oh, hang on. Don't play yet. Yes, let, if the jurors would let me know when the monitors are displaying the video. All right, go ahead. Detective Casey, were you able to see any emblem on the front grill of that vehicle as it drove away? I would have to look at it again. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this. Ask you this. Did you see any damage to the front end of that vehicle as it drove away? Objection leading. Overruled. I did not. Okay. I'm going to uh, put up State's Exhibit 14 now, please. Go ahead. Just to the... Yeah, just to the witness only, please. Thank you. Do you recognize Exhibit 14, sir? <laughs> yes, I do. What is the source of Exhibit 14? This is a still shot taken from the video. The same video we just saw, number 13? Yes. Okay. Move to admit 14 and permission to publish, Your Honor. The objections overruled. Exhibit 14 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Sir, do you see Daryl Brooks in this photograph? Objection. I don't consider to be in court that name again for the record. No, Daryl, <clears throat> overruled. Yes, I do. Can you identify or, excuse me, sh excuse me, describe the clothing items that you see him wearing in this photograph? So it's not in the jury box. Oh, it's not in the jury box yet. I'm sorry. You can state your objection, though. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Mr. Brooks is wearing a red T-shirt, blue jeans, and he has blue colored flip-flops on with white socks and what's the uh, date and time stamp for this photograph please it's 11 21 2021 at 13 colon 26 colon 08 hours and that's what time sir Jason Lee. in uh, on the 12 hour clock Jason Lee. overruled that would be 1 26 p.m. Any other questions, sir? <coughs> Let me cross. <coughs> In the two exhibits we just watched, 13 and 14, do you see anyone driving a vehicle? No, I do not.
do you know if anyone's in the vehicle at the time that you see it pull away? I would assume based on my training experience that when the vehicle pulled away that there was someone inside the vehicle because in order to move a vehicle you have to manipulate the controls, the shifter, the brake, the accelerator. So my assumption is is that someone is inside the vehicle doing that. That wasn't the question. Did you see anyone in the vehicle? That, that, <coughs> that was the question and he's already asked and answered. The question is, anyone can be seen. The objections, I'm not sure what the objection was, but the answer may stand. You can ask your next question. Let's go back to the exhibit 175 and pull that up for the witness. Would the state please pull that up? <clears throat> witness only or published? Published. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Jurors, let me know when it's in the jury box as well. Just, Go ahead. It's in the jury. You box. just testified that this was the alleged defendant. How do you know that? Can you see a face? Which question are you asking? Those were two. Can you see the face <coughs> on the circle individual in that exhibit? In this clip, I cannot see the face of the person that is circled. So how do you know who it is? I can tell who that is because I have watched this video in its entirety and I can tell that it is you based on all of my contacts with you. So why were there not any other exhibits that can give credibility to you positively identifying the individual in this video? Objection argumentative Grounds. compound sustained us to the form of the question. Is it fair to say that this is the only exhibit photo from the video? Go ahead. Can you uh, clarify the only one that is shown today or the only one that has ever been taken? The only, the only one, one, that's, ever the only one that's, that's being shown here. right here today. <coughs> is this the only one? that is an exhibit being shown here today yes this is the only one that we've shown today and you can tell just from this exhibit exactly who that individual is i don't believe that was my testimony i'm asking a question from just looking at this no but i know from looking at the entire video that it's you we're talking about this exhibit that's being shown right now during your testimony right now at this moment strictly that could you ask your object. question please i'm going to object asked and answered sustained us to the form of the question as well would it be fair to say that from this exhibit 175 that they're looking at right now that you cannot tell who the circle individual is would that be fair to say that would be fair to say can you clear the circle? Thank you, Madam Clerk. And do you recall what date you uh, viewed this video, as you call it? I have viewed this video multiple times. I don't recall the specific dates that I've seen it. Was it relatively early, early on in the investigation? <clears throat> There have been multiple times that I've watched this video. Some of them early, some of them as late as yesterday. Do you recall seeing this video uh, the same night of the incident or in the days following? I did not see it the night off, but it would be the days following that I have seen it. 
And at that time, did you have knowledge of who that vehicle belonged to? Yes, I did. And did you have knowledge of the usage of that video? I mean, the usage of that vehicle? I'm not sure that I understand the question. Did you have knowledge of who may have been using the vehicle? Objection vague as to time. Sustained as to the form of the question, if you could limit or perhaps direct him to a specific time frame regarding the use of the vehicle? At the time of the incident? Yes. And what, and can you clear that? And what information was that? The information that I had is that the night of the incident that you, Daryl Brooks, were the person that were operating the vehicle. And who did you learn that from? And for the record, I don't consent to that name. Noted. For the record. Ruled. Go ahead and answer. Can you repeat your question, please? You done with the exhibit, sir? Uh, no, I'm not. So you're withdrawing you, your question? Yeah, I'm, I'm going another route. All right, thank you. You you just testified to seeing the entire video that this steel frame uh, exhibit came from, correct? I testified that this came from the entire video, correct? You you said that you viewed the video in its entirety, correct? The entirety of what we recovered from your social media account, I'm not sure if there is a longer version someplace, but... Did you see the video in its entirety? The, the video that this exhibit came from? Yes. And are these the only two individuals that you observed in that video? They are the only two that I recall seeing in the video. Did you ever inquire about the identity of this individual? No, I have not. Can you clear that circle? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would it be fair to say that from looking strictly at the exhibit that we're viewing right now, that both individuals have the same hairstyle? It would be fair to say. Can we clear the X's and clear the exhibit? Go ahead. Thank you. We go back to exhibit 13. Publish. Go ahead. The state would assist, please. 13. Um, can you play it? Well, just, just, just play it. I'll, I'll uh, tell you when to pause it. That's okay. Go ahead. It's not up yet. Oh, thank you. We're going to wait until it's in the jury box. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Just a reminder, it's 49 seconds long. I don't think I'm going to need the... Well, I don't know. Yeah, I might. Pause. Right there, the individual that you observe. Right here. Do you see them wearing a hoodie? The person in that photo is not wearing a hoodie. Do you see a hoodie anywhere present in this vi in, in this video? No, I don't see a video or a hoodie anywhere in the video. Um, can you take the X down? From this angle, 
it'd be fair to say that you can see the front, very front end of the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Can you see any windows or see inside the, the vehicle at that time? Or at the time that we're looking at right now? You cannot see inside the vehicle at this time. So it would be fair to say that just by looking at what we're looking at now, you wouldn't know if anyone's already inside the vehicle. This has been asked and answered, Your Honor. Um, I'll allow it. The witness may answer. This is a, diff a whole different... Uh, I'm allowing it. Go ahead. That is correct. From this video, you cannot tell if anyone else is inside the vehicle. So it would be fair to say that you, you're not sure? It's fair to say that I am not sure. Can we pull this down? Whoa, wait, wait, I'm sorry, Keith. Pull that back up for one second. Same exhibit. Same Go exhibit, ahead. 13. All right. The state would put that you, back right. on display. Yeah. There you go. Do you want any more of a plate or just the still? We're waiting for the jury or do they? It's up. Um, no, we don't need a plate. Do you need to, it to go to a certain point? Yes. All right. Do you know what point? I'm, I'm, I'm about to do it right now. Looking at this house right here. Do you see an address posted anywhere on this house? In the photo that you circled, no. So it would be fair to say that you don't know the address of this of this house? That is incorrect. You just said that you don't see an address posted anywhere in this house. So from the vehicle, I mean, strike that, not the vehicle. I'm still looking in the corner right here. From the video that we're viewing right now, do you see an address posted anywhere on this house? I do not see an address posted in this photo. So judging by this, well actually it's a video, but judging by this video, how can you know the address of this, of this house? Because I've been at this house before to talk with your mother. I've seen the address on the front of the house. Judging by this, Video. Come on, you have to let him finish because that was not the question you asked. You asked him how he knew he can answer. Go ahead, Detective Casey. I have been at this address before. I have spoken to your mother. I have been in the backyard of the residence. I've seen the address on the front of the house. I know this to be your mother's house. I recognize from this photo to be your mother's address at 4014 North 19th Street. You recognize the house or the address? Because we don't see an address in this video. I recognize this house to be that address from being and, there. And had you already been there, as you say, and talked to people, as you say, before you viewed this video? I believe that I saw the video first, and then I was at the address. So at the time that you saw this video, you didn't know whose house that was? Um. That would be an incorrect statement. You just said that you saw the video first before going to the house. Did you or did you not say that? Would that be fair to say? I guess I'm a little confused in your question. We received the video. We know from getting it from the mothers that she said that that is where she lives. So I knew that this was where she lives when I watched the video. That I'll, I'll, I'll follow you, but that, that clarification wasn't stated before, so that's fair from the clarification of how you just clarified it. Can you clear the circle, please? This, uh, this exhibit? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. All right, you can click it down. Thank you. You made reference to uh, a key being found. Did you yourself find that key? No, I did not. Did you... Were you at the scene where the key was found at the time it was found? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say that 
you were told that a key was found. Yes, I was told that a key was found. So it would be fair to say that you went off of what you were told. You actually, you actually didn't observe this with your own eyes. What are you speaking of? The key being found. That's correct. I was told by two officers who I've worked with for a long time and I trust what they tell me to be accurate. You made reference to there being a couple, what's the word you use, a couple ways to identify individuals. And you stated uh, that you had spoken with uh, the, the mothers of the alleged defendant's children. Would that be fair to say? I believe I said I spoke with the mother of three of your children. At that time, was the alleged defendant already in custody? Yes, he was. Wouldn't it have been easier to just use the um, fingerprints that were already obtained? Um, like I said before, the fingerprints was one way. We also verified it talking to his family members that his identity. Any reason why, or, or let me back up. Is it fair to say that there were there was more confirmation needed to identify the alleged defendant at that point, seeing as how the fingerprints were already obtained? Uh, we were just being thorough. We were certain that it was Daryl Brooks that we had in custody based on his fingerprints and other information that we had. It was just a matter of being thorough and, and verifying the person that we had and the name that he goes by. It'd be fair to say fingerprints are pretty accurate though, correct? Would that be fair to say? I think that would be fair to say. So it would also be fair to say that there wouldn't be any reason why the alleged defendant that was in custody would be someone else. Wouldn't that be fair to say? Objection, that's compound and difficult to follow. It's not compound. Uh, it's sustained not as to the to form follow. of the question, sir. Please that rephrase. was very clear. Sustained as to the form of the question. And where did the interviewing of uh, the mothers of these, these children take place, if you recall? I suppose, spoke to Jessica Macklin in Iowa at her residence. I spoke to Angel Fitzpatrick at her residence in Manhattan Falls. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we strike that? Why do the names have to be stated? Oh. Overruled, he was answering the question. His uh, answer may stand. Your request to strike is denied, and the witness may continue answering. I spoke to Angel Fitzpatrick in Menominee Falls at her residence, and I spoke to Erica Patterson a number of times um, at various locations about you. You said uh, one of the mothers of these children you spoke to in Iowa. Correct. Why would you go all the way to Iowa? Because initially you listed her as a witness on your witness list for court. So we went there and we wanted to verify what information she might have that she would testify to. Uh, just for the record, I don't recall listing anyone as a witness, just for the record. For the record, Mr. Brooks, you can't testify um, at this moment. You'll have an opportunity should you choose. I just um, wanted that clear for the record since what was can't be, said. It's struck from the record I, at this I, point I, because you're attempting to testify. The jury will disregard testify. that. I just wanted the record to show the that jury I have no will knowledge of doing that. 
And if the jury will disregard those statements made by the defendant so is, that he is not testifying and it would be improper at this time for the court to receive them. Well, I don't think a Go, record um, next made question, it, sir. something that I didn't do. Next question, sir. It's ridiculous. So you, you said you went to Iowa to, to try to find out what would be testified to. Why? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. And calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained us on all basis. Next question. Was that an attempt to prepare for what might have been said? I'll allow that. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Why would there be preparation in, in, involved in someone who might testify on an alleged defendant's behalf? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Um, overruled. I'll allow it. Uh, we went there to speak with her, so if she came and testified, there wouldn't be any surprises. We also wanted to find out if there's any background information that she had about Mr. Brooks that would be helpful in our investigation. So you made reference to not being any surprises. Would it be fair to say that there is a little worry there? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. What, what surprises were you referring to? What do you mean by surprises? No surprises. Your Honor, I object to this entire line of questioning. This witness is not expected to testify. It's wholly irrelevant. Well, he opened the door by putting the name on the record and saying where he went. Um, I will allow one more question on this. Go ahead. You may answer. Could you re-ask the question, please? What do you mean by making sure that there were no surprises? We wanted to make sure that there wasn't any information that we weren't aware of that may come up later that would be helpful in the trial. Do you recall making an attempt to interview the child? Objection. Relevance. Who was seven at the time? Sustained. Next question, please. Reason for the sustain, Your Honor? Not relevant. Well, it was the question was asked, does he recall? Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain again? Relevance. How is it not relevant? Keep going, sir. Did you interview the child? Same objection. Grounds. S sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Relevance. Why would you ask to interview the child? Your Honor, objection. Sustained. This entire line of cop questioning is inappropriate. Sustained. Move on. Mr. I would Brooks. object that trying to interview a seven-year-old child is... Sir, move on, please. 906-11. It's also not relevant. Assume that's not in evidence. It was a tricky move. Um, <clears throat> you made reference to, in, in, in regards to Exhibit 88 and 89, which were documents from an entirely different county. Do you work for Milwaukee County? No, I do not. So how did Milwaukee County, which is a different county, come into your investigation in Waukesha County? You may answer. Uh, with the understanding there are some limited pretrial rulings that still are in play. Go ahead. During the normal, just I'm sorry for interrupting. I was, I started off by saying, 
in regards to Exhibit 88 and 89? That's how I started the question, just for the record. I know. I'm reminding the witness of the pretrial ruling. Okay. <coughs> During the normal course of an investigation, we do background on a person to see if they have any open cases or any information that would be helpful. There is a computer system that displays uh, what cases or charges are open for a person and it is relevant because if you are charged in one county and you violate conditions of bail, you can also be charged in another county for those violations. And in reference to uh, having charges in one county and potentially being charged in another county, in reference to that, essentially have to uh, violate the conditions in one county and strictly be charged in that county? That is an inaccurate statement. You being in uh, law enforcement for, for a very long time, it would be fair to say that you're familiar with the term double jeopardy, right? I've heard the term before. <laughs> and what is your understanding of what that term means? Objection, irrelevant, grounds, grounds scope of the witness's knowledge, <coughs> legal conclusion, sustained for all those reasons. So when did you become the lead investigator in this, in this matter? Uh, it was about 8.30 p.m. on November 21st, 2021. So same night? Correct. And whom were you made lead investigator by? Oh, uh, command staff or Lieutenant Jerry Habonic. Do you recall why you were tapped to be the lead investigator? Because I was the most qualified person and had the most experience to take care of it. That's what I've been told. Any other reasons besides that? Also because I was at the parade route a little bit earlier and I had the most information out of anyone. It took a little while for the other uh, staff to come in. So I already had a little bit of a head start with the information that I already had learned as being there at the beginning. And that would be in re uh, the information that you said you had more knowledge of than anyone else at that time. Would that be in reference to having uh, an interaction with the vehicle at some point? I would say as a totality of the situation. I was there when the car first went through. I know what the radio traffic was for taking Mr. Brooks into custody. There's also some decisions that were made early on on how to proceed with the case. I was also on scene downtown and took control of the crime scene initially. So a lot of those things were, decisions were made even before our command staff started coming in uh, to take over lead on the case. When you referenced, um, you, were, you were there at the beginning when the uh, vehicle first entered in the parade. Uh, what do you recall about when the vehicle first entered the parade? I remember a horn beeping, a uh, red Ford Escape driving around, and then you driving into me and not stopping when I pounded on your hood and window. Driving into you, what do you mean? I meant that I was in front of your vehicle, your vehicle contacted me, pushed me off to the side, 
and continue driving without stopping. Were you injured in this incident? I was not injured, thankfully. And you, you made reference to a horn beeping. What do you mean a horn beeping? I mean, a mean horn the vehicle was beeping its horn? Yes, the vehicle was beeping its horn. What would be the only time a vehicle would beep their horn? Objection, speculation. Rounds. Sustained. Calls Reason. for speculation. Do you know why a vehicle, why the vehicle was beeping their horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Do you know why you um, would beep your asked, horn? Do you know why? So I'll, he can answer that question. Can you repeat the question, please. Do you know why the vehicle was beeping its horn? I imagine that the driver was angry and wanted to get through the crowd. And how did you come to that determination? Uh, I've been driving a long time. And a lot of times people get angry, they're late, they beat their horn at you in a way that is because they're upset and they're trying to get past you. Do you know that for sure? You asked me my opinion. Yes, I, I, I did ask your opinion. Now I'm asking you, do you know for sure if the driver of the vehicle you observed was in fact angry? I assume that he was. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. I do not know for sure, but that is my opinion, is that he was angry. And at that time, <coughs> you had no knowledge who the driver was. Would that be fair to say? Well, I had knowledge because I saw your face. I did not know your name. Did you know time. who the driver was? No, meaning had you had any prior interactions with them before this incident? That's what I mean by no. Have you had any conversations with him? Talk to him? Hold on. Compound question. Ask one. I was just giving clarification of no. You what I meant by it's no. It's a compound question. Please rephrase. Before before you observed this vehicle, as you say, this driver, that you, as you say, did you know them? I have no memory of meeting Mr. Brooks before that afternoon. So it would be fair to say that you're assuming something that you don't know. Would that be fair to say? Objection, compound, vague, and argumentative. Sustained. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. How would you know how someone's feeling if you don't know who they are? Your Honor, he opened the door to this. It's asked and answered. The witness has given his opinion. It's clear. Grounds. I object. Um, Improper question. Grounds. I will allow the witness to answer why he came to that conclusion. Go ahead. Like I said before, I've been driving a long time, and a lot of times when people are beeping their horns, it's because they're late, they're angry at something that something happened, and that's why I concluded that the person was probably angry. So it would be, would it be fair to say that another reason why a vehicle would beep his horn would be to alert people to the presence. Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant speculation. Grounds. Um, I'll allow it based upon his training and experience. He may answer. It's a possibility. And did you <coughs> hear this beeping before the vehicle approached you? Yes, I did. You may you may reference to and I'm referring to the, the uh, ring, the ring video obtained <coughs> in exhibits 88. Or I'm sorry, the ring video obtained in exhibits 13 and 14. You made reference to obtaining that the same night of the incident. Do you recall saying that? 
Yes, I recall seeing that. And it would be fair to say that you yourself have been present for our testimony. Would that be fair to say? That is not correct. How so? I was sick one day and I was not here. Well, I'm, I'm referring to, let me clarify. Maybe I wasn't clear enough. Uh, pertaining to our testimony since trial began, you've been present for our testimony. Would that be fair to say? I believe I've seen most of it. <clears throat> Do you recall testimony of and I'm referring to again so we clear for the record exhibits 13 and 14 <laughs> ring footage that was obtained by the owner of 4014 North 19th Street that you testified to obtaining the, the ring uh, footage the same night were you aware that well, let me back up just a little bit. How were you able to obtain that ring footage? There was officers that went to Freighter Hospital where Don Woods, Mr. Brooks's mother was working. They spoke to her um, and she's the one that alerted to them that she had ring video at the house and offered to remotely download that video for them. And were you there yourself? I was not there myself. When did you yourself speak to the owner of that home? The last time that I spoke to Don Woods was on August 8th of this year. Uh, I may have spoken to her a few times before that. I don't recall the exact dates. I'm, I'm referring to the first time that you spoke. I don't recall the first time. I don't recall the, the first date when that was. And you, you did just make reference to an August 8th date. And what was the extent of that conversation? Objection calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained hearsay. The August 8th date that you referred to, was that in, in any way follow-up? Was that follow-up investigation? Follow-up to what? Well, you stated that you had spoken previously before the August 8th date. So the question is, was the August 8th date follow-up to the investigation that you were already actively lead of? I mean, everything is related to this investigation. The so investigation continues every day. It's not end, it will not end until this trial is over. <clears throat> so what follow-up was needed at the time of the August 8th interview. I guess that's what you would call it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Objection. Still calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Sustained. Why did you need to talk to Miss Woods multiple times? Because every time we spoke to her, we got different information. And at that time, we were following up with your niece and nephew of what their testimony would be in this case uh, what testimony are you referring to because I don't recall any nieces or nephews testifying I don't think I'm allowed to say it I think this line of questioning is irrelevant your honor um, I'll sustain the objection and at an appropriate break I can uh, address it further if need be. 
please move on to an, a new topic, sir. You made reference to uh, people who were injured at the parade inadvertently. You recall that? Yes, I do. To your knowledge, were any of those charged? My testimony before is that those people's cases were not charged. And were they seen as victims? I'm going to object to the form of that question. I think it calls for a legal conclusion, Your Honor. It does not. I ask to, I ask to his knowledge. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. If you could please rephrase. Serving a warrant to the Waukesha County Jail on July 1st of 2022? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was for? Yes, I do. And what was that for? Can you stay for the record and for the jury? It was for Mr. Brooks's jail cell. And why did you serve a warrant? For jail cell. Your Honor, I object pursuant to legal rulings previously issued in this case. I don't think this is relevant. I um, I'll sustain the objection. It's not relevant. I'll certainly take it up at a later point if need be. What was the warrant pursuant to? I sustain the objection. Next topic, please. He did answer. He's, I'm, I sustain the state's objection. I'm directing him not to answer. We'll take it up separately. I want to. I'll have you continue with your cross-exam, and I'll take it up uh, later. reference to this vehicle driving into you but stated you were not injured did you file a claim in this matter no I did not <coughs> do you consider yourself an injured party in this matter no I do not do you yourself know if anyone filed a claim in this matter 
Can you be more specific? Do you yourself know if anyone filed a claim in this matter? Just in general? Whatever your interpretation of that will be? I would say yes. And do you know what that claim was? Uh, I would imagine that there was a lot of injuries from the people. A lot of people had very um, extensive medical bills. I <coughs> imagine that they would file a claim with their insurance company to have those bills paid. So you had knowledge of <coughs> what was filed to their particular insurance companies? I have no knowledge, but my assumption is that they would have filed those bills. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure? That was my testimony. Is that the answer? Yes. Investigator, for this matter, um, where are you, to your knowledge, aware of any uh, uh, GoFundMe type of uh, type of things? Objection relevant. To? I'm sorry. Uh, do you mean as it relates to? As it relates to the incident. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. I have no direct knowledge but I assume that there are some GoFundMe pages out there. It's typical in something like this. And what do you mean by typical? You've seen this before? Is that what you mean by typical? We have a very loving and caring community where a lot of times when bad things happen to people, people pull together and offer financial assistance to help people. Is it fair to say that, that there's a lot of communities like that across Wisconsin? Yes, I think there are. And it would be fair to say that you've worked extremely close with the district attorney's office during the entirety of this matter. Would that be fair to say? The district attorney's office has been involved in this investigation um, since the night of, so we have worked closely. So it would be fair to say extremely close seeing as how you've been present for the whole trial pretty much? Can you define extremely for me? I would like you to define it extremely. I'll answer yes if that helps. To your knowledge, do you know if it's typical for a lead investigator to sit right behind the prosecution table at a trial? Yes, it's very typical. It happens in uh, most larger cases, um, especially a case of this magnitude. There would be a court officer. Um, so yes, that's a very typical thing that happens. Have you ever done this before? I've done this multiple times before. And are you the only detective in the, in the investigation that uh, has that honor? Objection, vague. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. Are you the only detective 
directly involved in the investigation that sits with the prosecution? I'm talking about this case or any this, case? This or particular case. You, I'm sorry, you interrupted me. Could you repeat that, please? Um, well, you said this case. I'm referring to this case, yes. Could you re-ask the question, please? Are you the only detective actively involved in this investigation that sits with the prosecution in yeah. reference to this case? Yes, I'm the only person, the only detective that's sitting with the prosecution during this trial. So would you explain who the other officer is in the blue suit over here? Objection to the relevance, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained. I just want to know his role. Sustained. Next question, Reason for the please. sustain. Not relevant. He's been in the courtroom the whole trial. How is it not relevant? Mr. Brooks, next question, please. Nobody knows who he is. That should be known. Nobody's it's not relevant to the issues that the jury thing. needs to determine. Next question, sir. Is it asking or telling? I'm assuming that's asking. You know what the other one would entail. Um, do you have a question, sir? <coughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I, I would like to get to it. Thank you. Please do so. Thank you. I, oh, I will. So seeing as how you sat with the prosecution for the entirety of this matter, it would be fair to assume that you know who the plaintiff is in this matter. Yes, I do. And who would the plaintiff be in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. Is that an entity or a living human being? It's an entity. How can an entity file a claim? Objection. Grounds. Legal conclusion. Grounds. Sustained. You are you are aware that only a living, breathing human being can actually file a claim. A, a, a entity cannot walk into anywhere and file a claim if it's not even a, a, a real person. Objection. You are aware strike. of that, right? Go ahead, Attorney Upper. Move to strike the statements by Mr. Brooks. Also object to the question that was asked at the end as irrelevant, argumentative and calling for a legal conclusion. Objection is not calling the, for a legal conclusion in any the way. The court sustains the objection. The request to strike the statements made by Mr. Brooks are granted, or the request is granted. The jury will disregard <clears throat> the statement and the question asked for all of the reasons indicated by the stated also is a misstatement of the law. No, I, I definitely object to that, Your Honor. Your objection yeah. is noted. Um, I'm going to have the jury stand for a second. They've been sitting for quite some time, and then you can formulate your next question. I'll take, I'll take exception to that ruling. <coughs> and would like a legal finding of fact. <coughs> your objection is noted. It's overruled. And that's a judicial determination. Thank you. Be seated. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Please continue with your question. Have you ever had any interactions with this entity, State of Wisconsin? Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, I'm not going to allow the witness to answer. It's vague. There, there, was, no, there was no objection. Under 906.11, <coughs> I shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses. Please, next topic. These questions we were ad we addressed during the initial cross-examination of this witness. They're going to keep coming up. And I determined at that time that they weren't relevant. So next topic, They're please. They're going to keep coming up. Um, 
under 906.11, sir, please move on to a new topic. They're going to keep coming in. Or the cross-examination, I will um, end. Do, do, and you see, do you see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom today? Objection. Argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Final warning, sir. Next topic or the cross-examination, I will you, you bring it you to don't an end. Keep, you don't got to keep doing that, Your Honor. You don't got to keep doing that. It's my responsibility, sir, over this trial. I'm, I'm informed. And Thank I you. And Next I respect topic. that. But it's relevant for the jury to know the truth. They deserve to know the truth. Move to strike, Your Honor. Granted, the jury will disregard Regret. those last statements. Not relevant. To that. Mr. Brooks is not testifying. They mistake the law. I object to that. That's not lawful law. It's Noted. Not truthful. All right. Under 906.11, I am now uh, stopping the cross examination. Any redirect by the state? Objection to that, and I would like Noted. to find an effect. Uh, Attorney Opper, any redirect? Yes, just very briefly, Your Honor. Uh -huh. I would like to display for the witness only exhibit 178. Objection. <coughs> I haven't seen the exhibit yet, so I'll take well, it under I'm, advisement. I'm objecting still because the, the. You may show it to the witness. There, there needs, needs to be an answer to why the, the jury's not being told information that they deserve to know. Go ahead, Attorney Offer. Your Honor, for the record, this is a video I'm going to play about the first five or ten seconds for the witness to identify it before uh, moving on, please. And this this seems an objection because this seems like a whole new exhibit. This was never mentioned before. It was never... I haven't seen it. I can't rule on it, sir, so let me I mean, see it and I'll take your objection under... I'll it, take it the objection under before. advisement. Go ahead. I haven't seen this in any of the exhibits that I have, so how could it just be created now and be made an exhibit? Go ahead, Attorney I have Opera. all the exhibits. Go ahead, Attorney Opera. I haven't seen it yet. There's nothing on my screen that I can see. I see it's now playing. So now we're just creating exhibits now. I have all the exhibits, and this was never in it. Oh, man. All right, you can stop. Sir, do you recognize what's contained in State's Exhibit 178? Objection. Overrule. Relevancy. <coughs> Overrule. Leading. Go ahead and answer. Yes, I do. What is it? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. You still, uh, you still, I'm still going to object. How is this? Mr. Brooks, I, I ask that you honor I have all the, the ruling that I, I made. I have all the exhibits, though, Your Honor. I have Mr. them all. Brooks. They were provided to me, and this was never in the exhibit, so how could it just be made an exhibit? I'll take this up outside the presence of the jury, but I'm going to allow can it. it. Can that be stated for the record? Can that be explained? No. The jury will disregard the statements made by Mr. Brooks. They're not evidence, and the statement continues. So this exhibit shouldn't be evidence, then, because Mr. it didn't Brooks, exist the objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. This, there was a still photo shown before of Mr. Brooks standing in front of the four escape. This is the video in which that still photo was taken from. You Objection. How does he know that? Um, overruled. The witness may answer. I'll give you the opportunity to question him about it when the state's done asking the questions. Go ahead. <laughs> Where'd you get this video from, sir? Objection. Leading. Overrule the witness may answer. For Mr. Brooks' social media uh, account. Okay. Your Honor, move to admit 178 and permission to publish. Objection to the relevancy. I um, find it's relevant. I'll obtained. receive exhibit 168. Permission to publish is granted. Uh, for the record, uh, it's 178, please? Your Honor. No, could you please tell me the length of the video? The length is two minutes, 33 seconds. We're going to play it in its entirety, but without volume, Your Honor. All right, thank you. And uh, I, I object to that. And I would like to make an offer of proof of my appeal. We'll do that outside the presence of the uh, jury, but I will allow the state to play it in its entirety without audio. Your Honor, I have all the exhibits. They were provided. Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up. Along with the other two issues, I still need to but address. How, but how can you play something that's not that I did? Mr. Brooks, have. I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. This your is objections are noted. This is it's mind boggling. Rule. Mind and boggling. Actually, uh, Your Honor, I changed my mind. I would like to play the audio, please. 
This is mind boggling. Um, I want to have it played first without, and then I'll make a ruling and I'll take that up. Um, okay, I understand. Thank you. So we will play the entire video, Your Honor, two minutes, 33 seconds. Our objection to that, why, why does the whole video need to be played? Is, is this setting the foundation? It's relevant. You questioned the officer about it. You questioned the question detective about, about I his question knowledge. Him about the steel frame from the video. The video wasn't even in, in the exhibits that I received. actually didn't even receive it. Mr. Brooks, please obtained. stop. The jury will disregard his statements. He's not testifying. The video's playing. Sound. I want to hear it now. I'll address that later. We address why it was created out of the blue, too. Go ahead, attorney, after the video is finished playing. Thank you. Sir, did you see during the uh, playing of that video the uh, image that was captured as a screenshot and presented to you uh, in your direct testimony as state's exhibit number 175? Objection leading. Overruled foundational. The witness may answer. Yes, a lot of... A lot of <laughs> you were questioned on cross-examination as to your ability to identify Mr. Brooks in Exhibit 175, correct? Objection. That question was asked initially by Attorney Popper. Overruled. The yeah. witness may answer. Sorry. Yes, I was. As you just watched the entire video again now in court, as states Exhibit 178, did you clearly see Mr. Brooks in that video, sir? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. I believe there's no doubt that that's Mr. Brooks in the video and later standing next to the forest escape. Thank you. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. As to this particular piece of evidence only, Mr. Brooks, you may uh, ask questions of Detective Casey. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Yet. Noted. Do you have question. any questions for the witness? This. Uh, when, when did this video when was this made a, a exhibit because i don't have it objection that's not a question for the witness your honor yes Sustain. that was a question the question Sustain. when was this As video the made a question when was this video made <coughs> an exhibit that is a question i object to the question directed at the witness your honor it's beyond the scope of his knowledge Sustain. well he said he saw it but that's not the question asked so you can rephrase your question if you want to when, did, when did you see this exhibit? When did you see it? With the understanding that you're asking when did he see the video, I will when allow the question to be asked. When did you see this exhibit? 
With that understanding, you may answer Detective Casey. Am I answering when I saw the video for the first time? Yes. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Why is something always funny at that table? That it would be the same thing. I take that. I take that as disrespect because they were allowed to say something, and I said under my breath that was disrespect. Well, I would they just did the same to thing to avoid commentary. Okay, well, can you do that, please? And in my yes, because I'm will. always Absolutely. the one getting admonished. Everyone, I take that as disrespect too. Sir, I'm good. can I do my job? States directed to avoid laughing commentary. I didn't see it, so I can't further comment. I was looking at All these the witness. In here. Don't nobody However, see nothing. I'm advising both parties to show Come decorum on, this is not fair. and restraint to I be would. respectful of this jury's time and attention and to let them do their job by focusing on the testimony that's and exhibits and evidence that's presented. Go ahead, Detective Casey, you can answer the question about when you have seen this video prior to today. I saw the video uh, within a few days of Mr. Brooks being arrested. I've reviewed it since then a few times. I reviewed it yesterday and again this morning and now in court again. You said you reviewed it yesterday and this morning. If you have seen this video numerous times before yesterday and, to, and today, why did you feel the need to view it yesterday and today? Objection argumented. Grounds. Sustain this to the form of the question. Why did you need to uh, review it this morning? Objection argumentative. Overruled the witness may answer. Because I wanted to be 100% sure of the content and if there's any questions that were asked of it, I wanted to make sure that I would able, be able to answer them appropriately. And why was this, to your knowledge, why was this video never brought up in your earlier testimony? Objection. That's a misstatement, Grounds. your honor. Um, Sustained. It was, it was, as to it was the not part of the question. Assumes testimony. facts, not in evidence. If you have seen it numerous times before today, why did you need to see it again and make sure if any questions were asked, or however you refer to it? What, what would be the need to view, view again this morning something that you had viewed numerous times before? I'll objection. See what I'm well, objection. Compound. Asked and answered. Misstatement of the facts. Argumentative. Sustained. Did you view the video this morning because you knew that the video would be made an exhibit this morning? Objection. Assumes facts, not in evidence. Sustained. That's to the form of the question. This is mine, by the way. This is mine, by the way. Can you clarify again why you viewed the video this morning? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. So you're going to sustain everything? It was already answered, sir. Next question, please. And I'm asking for clarification. Next question, please. I don't, I don't got no more questions, man. All right. Thank you. This is mine, Bobby. Detective, you may step down. I'll excuse you, the jury. What you people were trying to do is not fair. Hide things from the jury repeatedly. You don't tell them all the information. Mr. Brooks, they need I'm going to gonna take up all of your objections outside the presence of the jury. I ask that you honor my decision to do that and you show courtesy and decorum. Because you asked. Mr. Brooks, please. Because you asked. That's the only reason. Because you asked. I see what you people are trying to do. It's not right. It's not fair and it's not right. You can have a seat. Well, once the jury's outside of the courtroom, I'll take up the objections previously in the evidence. All right. Um, first of all, uh, Attorney Opper, if you can make a record as to uh, this exhibit and uh, whether it's been turned over previously. It was previously included in the initial discovery that was sent initially to the public defender's office and now we have a record uh, that that uh, those three boxes were turned over to Mr. Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and it was not in the video footage that I have obtained. That video was not part of it. 
do you think and I would sit here and be this irritated? Mr. Brooks, I need to make a record. So just please sit down. There's no need for you to stand at the moment. Uh, I feel like standing right now. Please sit down. I feel like standing. All right, based upon the offer of proof provided by the state, and it was provided to prior counsel, um, that's satis that satisfies me as to that issue. Um, that's I indicated that's I would- accurate, Your Honor. Can we, can we have the prior counsel testify to that then? Uh, not at I, this time, sir. I have not obtained that. Um, right now, that is my first time seeing that as an exhibit. Mr. Brooks, I, I presume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're familiar with that video. Yes or no? We, we, what does that have to do with what we're talking because about? Because I'm going to make a finding based upon what I viewed in that video that there is absolutely no surprise to you. It appears to me, even without the video, that that's a music video, that you are in it, that the vehicle that has been the subject of this entire case, that Red Ford Escape with a plate uh, that's been testified to is in that video. That video is relevant for a number of different reasons, the first of which it goes to uh, identification of you, identification of the vehicle. You opened up the door uh, through your cross-exam of Detective Casey about his ability to identify you in that video. Um, and, and when I say identification of you specifically as it relates to Detective Casey's opinion that that's you in the video, of course, it's ultimately up to the jury to determine that um, and what relevance, if any, that evidence have. But you opened up the door for the state to show that video um, because you directly attacked the credibility of Detective Casey uh, through his knowledge of it and, and the identification by him of you in it. Uh, because the still image was of your back. Okay. So yeah. that opened up the door and it's proper. Um, there's absolutely no surprise to you that that video exists. And uh, that is my finding as it what, relates what to that. There's no surprise to me that exists. That, that was not the issue. The issue was how was it made an exhibit at the last moment? How does it be made an exhibit out of the blue? That was the issue. The issue. State can make an offer of proof to on that because obviously they marked it as an exhibit. But they with all respect, so Your Honor, you're mischaracterizing what I, what I said, and that the record needs to be clear. The issue that I raised was how did this, at the last minute, out of the blue, become an exhibit? That's the that was the issue. Go ahead and make your offer of proof on that. Thank you, Judge. And another uh, thing worth noting is the testimony of Detective Casey that this video was obtained from the defendant's own Facebook account as well. The court is well aware there's media. nothing so that... Hold on, well. sir. Stop interrupting. We have to make a record of it. You've interrupted multiple times. I've been abundantly patient with clear. you. Again, another interruption. So you need to be quiet and let the state make a record. Stop gesturing at me. me to be Stop rolling your eyes at me. Are you Stop I'm mumbling. looking right at you. I'm not rolling my eyes. No, you I'm have looking. throughout. I've seen I'm it looking. and I've made note I'm of looking it. looking at you. Okay, so are you asking me to be quiet or are you telling me to be quiet? Go ahead, Attorney Opper. Thank you, Your Honor. And just to you. indicate, Your Honor, <clears throat> this court has been abundantly patient with Mr. Brooks. He challenges the court's authority repeatedly. This court absolutely has the ability to tell him, sit down and be quiet. And you haven't done that. And I know why you haven't done that, Your Honor. And we appreciate that. He is not in control of this courtroom. You are. And he needs to respect that. This video was relevant based on his questioning of Detective Casey, as you just indicated, challenging his ability to identify the person who had their back turned to the camera in the still shot of State's Exhibit 175. Trials are fluid. When he opened the door to that, we came up with the video which Detective Casey testified repeatedly on direct examination and cross-examination as to how he knew that was Mr. Brooks because he had seen the rest of the video. He would not accept that. He pushed it and pushed it and pushed it until we played the video. The lyrics of that video probably would have been prejudicial. Originally, I wasn't going to ask for volume. Then I did because he pushed it again, and his voice and his mannerism of speech, I thought, would have assisted the jury in 
identifying Mr. Brooks as the person in the video with the red SUV. However, you smartly asked me to play it without the audio, and I did that, and then I never went back to that. This is all to the benefit of this defendant who continues to suggest and impugn the integrity of this court and this prosecution without basis. He doesn't like it because the evidence is stacking up and stacking up. And whenever it does, his response is to accuse you, the court, or the prosecutors of being unethical and hiding things. There is nothing in law that prevents me from pulling something out of my briefcase right now and making it an exhibit if it's relevant. You decide what's relevant, what's admissible, not Mr. Brooks. There is no law he can cite to no law, no authority whatsoever that says I can't make an exhibit essentially on the fly if it's called for, and that's exactly what just happened here. So I apologize for my tone with the court. I don't mean to direct this at the court. It is very frustrating. The court has demonstrated much more patience than I have with Mr. Brooks because, again, I do not appreciate his impugning the integrity of these proceedings, of your honor's efforts to run a fair trial, and of our efforts to run a fair trial. We have ethical obligations as well to be fair in this courtroom. We have respected that entirely. The reason I was laughing 30 seconds ago was because the exhibit was mislabeled. There was an extra Y and it said exhibit E, E-X-H-I-B-I-T-Y. And I turned around to the paralegal and pointed that out, and we laughed over it, the word exhibity. That was it. There has been no disrespect directed at Mr. Brooks directly in any fashion. So he can object all he wants, and he has made that clear. He will continue to object and obstruct the court and obstruct these proceedings every last chance he gets. But legally, everything has been above board and proper. And this exhibit is no exception. I apologize for my tone, Judge. Thank you. I appreciate that additional uh, record being made. I object to that. My previous ruling doesn't change in any way that the exhibit is relevant. Um, I indicated I would take it up because, uh, and I'm taking what the state's saying as uh, withdrawing the request to play the lyrics. That is correct. All right. Um, I have not heard them, but I'll certainly take the state uh, at its word as an officer of the court that um, it would be prejudicial based upon the lyrics that are in that video, but my decision to admit the video without audio stands. I do want to take up two other <coughs> issues. There was an objection uh, to questions regarding uh, cross-examination, so the objections were by the state. One had to do with possible, there's questioning about possible testimony with his niece and nephew and then the jail cell search issues. So Mr. Brooks, you asked the questions. Um, the state had objected. Since you're the proponent of what would presumably come in through the testimony of uh, Detective Casey, uh, what is your offer of proof as to why I should allow Detective Casey to come back on the stand and testify about his interaction? I believe it was with your mom and possible testimony of your niece and nephew. Um, it, it don't matter with Detective Casey. He, he's off the stand. He's not going back on the stand. Too. No, but I told you I would recall no, I, him. I, I wanted to take it up outside the I presence of the jury. To, how do I supposed to know? So are you withdrawing that, sir? How am I supposed to know? I, I think I deserve a chance to rebut what was just said. I think I deserve that much if it's a fair trial. What information? Do you want to provide to me oh. about that last exhibit? About what last exhibit? I'm talking about the, the the audacity of the prosecution to just put that on the record when it's stated un it's untrue. I don't know what you're talking about. What's untrue? We just heard her talk for five, ten minutes straight. Now don't nobody know what I'm talking about. I don't there was know a reference made to, what you're talking there was a about. Reference sir. Made to what I supposed to know about the evidence stacking up and this and that as if that has any bearing on what I still think and what I'm still going to present. It doesn't. Well, 
that's not what we're talking about at the moment. I, I made a ruling she, on an exhibit. She's been laughing and, and making comments under her breath the whole the time during the whole trial, and I never said nothing. I don't know what's being said, but I can tell that it's directed <laughs> towards me. I'm not, a, I'm not an idiot. I, I, have, I here, haven't made I, any of those observations, I, I didn't sir, say but you. I've observed. I didn't say you, Your Honor. No, no, no. But, what I've observed for, for her, is for her, her, Listen, please. Go ahead. For her to sit there and try to play it off as if she's not referencing to me, she must think I'm an idiot. Nobody that is very that disrespectful to me. I haven't said anything about that until today. She's done it numerous times. What are you talking about? I don't her know what you're laughing saying. under her breath. Her trying to cover up the microphone so they can laugh and he he and key key key. That they've been doing that the whole time. I didn't, say anything. I didn't say anything because about it. I have not noticed that. What I notice are three attorneys who cover up the microphone so that they're not heard when they're conferring with each other about evidentiary issues or about testimony. So why is it always laughing and, and, and giggling? I haven't noticed that. that other than the one thing you pointed out. Well, we have, we have cameras. That's what the cameras are for. Let's refocus our attention on what we're here for, and that's okay, this trial. Okay, yeah, I, I take and that as... And if you have anything I you want to put on as, the record... I'm putting it on the record. As as it a re you need to let me finish. As it relates to the video and my decision to admit it. She just admitted that she just now came with the exhibit. It was not... A, she just said... She just made it an exhibit. It that was not an it exhibit before she made it one. So do you have some legal basis, sir, for your position? I'm what do I need mean legal basis for when she just admitted on the record that she just made this exhibit up no, right she now? Didn't. That is a complete mischaracterization. Sure, she did not. That's what. So she wasn't implying that by saying that she did, she did not make it up. out of her suitcase. So that's a figure of Here, speech. Okay, so what right? is it implying to? What would that be implying to? As a how would anyone, how would I'm anyone moving on position? because you're not providing would, me with any legal any, basis. I didn't even finish. You, to, you told me that I can make the record. I'm intent to make the record. Sir, as it relates to the video and my decision to admit it, do you I'll have just any said that you didn't even let me finish. You're not letting me finish. You didn't let me finish either, Your Honor. Because you're not providing, providing me. But how do, you, how do you know I'm going to get to that if, if I finish? You're not providing me with anything from a legal basis for which I would consider changing my mind. So the state's withdrawn their request to play the audio. Then why play the video at all then? I've already made a ruling on that. You're questioning the ruling. You're not asking me to reconsider it based on any legal there basis. There should be a legal, a legal reconsideration of it. Then you need to provide me with the legal basis for that, sir. So I'm supposed to just come off that with the top, off the top of my head? Yes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> You're representing yourself. It's not ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So I was supposed to. I was supposed to already come in here this morning and say, "Oh, a video is going to be shown off the fly at the at the drop of a hat." Let me try to find some legal thing to combat. How Mr. am I Brooks, supposed to do? You that? open the bottom line is you open the door to it the playing of that video. We're not talking about and the opening video was doors. previously provided to you during discovery. We're not talking There's about opening the doors. We're talking no. about being fair. There's absolutely no prejudice that, to you. Your Honor, in with terms all of respect, surprise, with I all due respect, it. if I had right. done that, I am going to move on. If from I had done time. that, it would have been Brooks, a big I'm thing. advising you. Are you asking you me? Need, I'm advising you, sir. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I'm advising I don't know you to sit down and I don't be know what quiet. That means. And if you interrupt me again, you are on notice that you will forfeit your right to be present so in this trial. Me content. Mr. Brooks. For the entire trial? Did you say the entire trial? I never said any such thing. You said thing. for the trial. So Please? what do you mean? I'm asking what do you Mr. mean? Mr. Brooks, you continue to that come is not, at me. I don't consent to being caught You continue way. to fight with me. I'm you not are fighting being with disrespectful. You. I'm not fighting with you. I'm not. I'm going to give you, you one last opportunity to, to sit down and be quiet so I can make a, a finding as it relates to other to do things. That? Are you asking me to I don't to need do to that? ask. I'm telling you. Thank you. There were two other issues that came up that I advised the parties I would take up outside the presence of the jury uh, and give, if appropriate, Mr. Brooks the opportunity to ask further questions of Detective Casey. There was questioning by Mr. Brooks uh, about possible testimony and why it, it had to do with the air. It was in the context of him questioning Detective Casey about uh, speaking with Don Woods, his mother, and about a time in August 
uh, and there was some reference to his niece and nephew um, and I sustained the objection um, I wanted to take it up outside the presence of the jury that's the first issue the second issue was the questioning of detective Casey by mr. Brooks related to the jail search do you want the opportunity to question detective Casey about either one of these two topics is my first question okay why, why was it why was it an issue with me bringing this Mr. Brooks, I'm only going to ask you one more time, and if you don't saying, answer if I don't understand, then I if I don't understand what was the problem in the get-go with the question, how am I supposed to answer it now? Mr. Brooks, listen to me, please. I'm going to ask this question one more time. Man, it calls for I don't, like, I don't like your tone and the way you're talking and to me. I don't. Mr. I don't Brooks, appreciate it. Sit down. I don't care if no, you don't like I'm, my I'm tone. Gonna, You've been pushing my buttons all day throughout this entire okay, trial, and I have showed the utmost of respect no, for you, you and I Absolutely don't appreciate not. you impugning the integrity of this court. If that's what I you don't. want to call it, that's fine, but it's stop not accurate. Stop talking. What you mean, stop talking? I need to make a ruling. Okay, well, I'm let's, purposely let's not talk, putting you in the to, other courtroom let's right now. let talk to each other like adults then. Because Brooks, I've never told you to stop talking. I'm going to ask this question one more time, and if he doesn't answer it, I'll take it as a no. Do you want the opportunity to question Detective Casey regarding either his questioning or meeting up with your mom and your niece and nephew about possible testimony or the jail, the search of your jail cell? Yes or no? What was the problem with me asking the question right, about the jail? He's not answering my question. We'll move on. I'm trying to understand. If I don't I understand, right. how do I know? How do I know what I'm supposed to answer if I don't understand? And I don't agree to a stop.
The record in State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I think the audience needs to turn off. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let me do that again. We are back on the record. State versus Brooks appearances are as they were before. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Are there any issues related to exhibits or other things before I bring the jury back out for what I believe will be the state resting. No, Your Honor, I do believe that I did check with your clerk. Um, everything that we have um, offered and admitted matches what the court has. So I believe we are, are good on that. Um, I have one question oh, sure. about exhibit 89. And I don't know if I missed in my notes. Um, okay. What do the party's notes reflect on whether that was received? Um, I showed that it was offered and admitted before it's published, or it wasn't published to the jury. But if not, we would move Exhibit 89 into evidence. And do you recall what Exhibit 89 is? It's Otherwise, a certified bail form. No, no, no. I'm asking, oh. I'm asking Mr. Brooks. So, oh, sorry. Um, that was the second of the two bail bonds. Do you have a recollection of whether it was received? I don't. All right, then what I was I objected to it. I know you objected when it was, I think, displayed for the witness who then testified about it. Um, I'll receive it and also advise the jury. Were there any other exhibits? 
I have one other issue on <coughs> evidence and exhibits as well, but um, are there going to be any other exhibits that we need to tidy up the record in front of the jury with? I don't believe so. Um, I, I know at one point um, someone caught that we moved, it was either exhibit 175 or 178 into evidence and the court admitted either 165 or 168 on the record. So I don't know. Um, so maybe just I think you misspoke. Yeah. You have any recollection of that, sir? Recollection of what? Related to what the state just put on the record. Do you know what was that? What witness that was? Just that was um, Detective Casey. <coughs> Let's look at that. One seventy five was the screenshot taken from the video. I know I have a note that it was received and published. Mm -hmm. um, can you believe I may have just referenced it by the wrong name? I thought it was one seventy eight. I thought you referenced it by the wrong number. So it's either one seventy five. Um, one seventy five was referenced as one sixty five, or one seventy eight was referenced as um, one sixty eight. What is one seventy? I know that one seventy five is what I just said. Correct. What was one seventy eight? One seventy eight was the video. The oh, that was video. the most recent one. Okay. What's the request then as it relates to when the jury comes back in? Your Honor, I just, um, there's two different ways to do this. I can um, put on the record, I have the exhibit numbers, and I can just put on the record just to verify that these exhibits have all been offered and admitted into evidence, and the courts agreeing, because we've just agreed that those are, um, your records are the same as my records, or we can clarify just if there was some confusion about exhibits 175 and 178 that were shown to the jury this morning, those 175 and 178 were offered and the court has admitted those into evidence. So however you want to. All right, sir, do you have any position on how I address this in front of the jury? Yeah, I'm objected to them being admitted at all. Well, those objections were already addressed. I'm talking about how I addressed to make sure the jury knows they were received by the court. However you're going to do it is how you're going to do it. I don't think what i got to say much matters. Well, what you say matters, sir, but no, the fact that I've already ruled on the admissibility is not something I'm going to revisit. Uh, what i what I got to say... Hold on, that door is... All right, it's... Sometimes that door upstairs malfunctions and... All right, I didn't hear the last part of what you said. What I have to say about anything definitely doesn't matter. I take huge objection with that, sir. It's true. And it, that may be your perception, but that is absolutely not true. This court takes your positions on evidence, legal arguments, admissibility, uh, things of that nature. Um, I take all of that quite seriously. Um, but somehow it's always overruled or discarded. Sir, can I keep going because you've interrupted me once again. I, I, my perspective on all of this, sir, is when you disagree with a ruling, you interrupt. You try to debate the topic again and again. You make disparaging remarks, either directly or under your breath, that are audible. Sometimes you roll your eyes. I mean, just previous to the break, you and I were talking over each other. I couldn't really get a word in edgewise. You wanted to debate topics that I've already 
made decisions on. I wanted to get clarification on whether you wanted to pursue any questioning, for example, with Detective Casey. Um, I gave you multiple opportunities to answer questions directly. You chose not to do that. You directly challenged me about my authority in this courtroom. You refused to sit down repeatedly. Did I raise my voice? I absolutely did. Was I frustrated? I absolutely was. I'm sitting down. My voice is calm. I think the break was good. I hope for all it was good for me. We had had a very long morning. It was about 11.30 when we broke. It's now 11.54. <clears throat> I didn't remove you to the other courtroom despite my repeated warnings because frankly I knew I was going to take a break. And I just wanted to get through some issues outside the presence of the jury, which is the proper procedure for how to address objections if the record can't be done in a way that um, where more full record needs to be made is how I'll put it. And I indicated during the cross-examination of Detective Casey, I would take your objections under advisement. I would address them outside the presence of the jury. You chose not to answer my questions. And so I moved on. So now, with you. respect to, I, I want to also address exhibits and the normal course of exhibits coming in a trial. Because I think there's some misunderstanding and certainly confusion on your part, sir, about the exhibit list that I asked the t state to file near the beginning. And that was, frankly, to assist the court and my clerk in keeping track. Most trials, the normal course of action is as long as an exhibit has been uh, provided to a party previously or in some circumstances, if not, it's rebuttal, we're not quite there yet, that as long as it's been turned over in discovery, oftentimes parties will simply have exhibits marked as they're presented in the course of a trial. There's not a legal requirement unless a judge orders it uh, that would prohibit a party from marking a document that's been already exchanged and having it offered as an exhibit. There was nothing, nothing improper about what the state did with Exhibit 178. And I want to make that record very, very clear. As Attorney Opper stated, trials are fluid. Things happen. Parties can open the door to what might be inadmissible evidence uh, for a variety of reasons. For example, this court made a number of pretrial rulings related to other acts evidence. Even during your cross-examination today, you came awfully close. I had a, the witness turn to me and pause and say, I don't think I can answer that in a clear recognition that that witness, Detective Casey, understood his obligation to honor the pretrial rulings. And we moved on from there. Um, I bet that's happened a half a dozen times in this trial. And that's frankly to protect your rights, sir. <laughs> The door could have been opened a long time ago to the other acts evidence with Erica Patterson. And I frankly kept it out despite your questions. So with that, I want to bring the jury back out. I will ask the state um, I'll simply just ask the state, are there any, um, anything additional the state's offering by way of testimony or exhibits? You can then address the exhibit issue, then I'll ask the state if the state has any additional witnesses, um, and the state can officially rest. Um, given the time of day that it is, it's, um, 11.58. Um, I'm not going to have uh, Mr. Brooks start with his opening statement. We'll do that when we come back after the lunch hour. 
Um, I think, frankly, the time over the lunch hour will be good for everyone to regroup, hopefully get a little bit to eat and uh, come back fresh. And then we'll have um, his opening statement and the start of testimony. Before I bring the jury out, there's one other thing I want to do, though. I just need a moment to pull uh, something up from on my computer. So is that is that addressing subject matter jurisdiction that you're pulling up? No. When would that be proven for the sir, record? Sir, please don't interrupt me. I need to focus on what I'm doing. I'm not doing. interrupting you. I'm just asking the question. All right. I'm not going to be addressing that. So, so would it don't be interrupt me right now. I'm trying to do something on my computer. Would it be proven on the record? I feel it's important at this time to at least give you the advisement pursuant to special material 28. It is regarding your decision on whether to testify. I'm not asking you to make that decision, but since we're on the verge of you starting your case and it may impact your um, opening statement, um, I wanted to go through the following. Um, sir, are you aware that you have a constitutional right to testify? I've been informed. Are you advised and informed that you also have a constitutional right not to testify? I'm not advised, I'm informed. Are you advised and informed that the decision whether to testify is for you to make? I don't understand the question. Do you, are you advised and informed that the decision on whether you testify in this trial is for you and you alone to make? I'm informed. Not advised. You under do you are you advised and informed, sir, that if you choose not to testify, the jury will be advised that they cannot use that against you. In other words, you have that right not to testify. I'm informed. When you make a determination about whether to testify in this trial, I will further be asking you about whether anyone has made any threats or promises to you to influence your decision. I may um, also briefly go over your educational background. Did you hear me say that? No, I'll say it again. At the appropriate time, uh, when we go through this discussion more fully, I will also ask you whether anyone has made any promises to you to influence your decision on whether to testify. Did you hear me say that? I'll be informed. And then I will also ask you if anyone's made any threats um, or coerced you in any way in your decision to testify or not. Uh, what's the significance of that? so that I can make appropriate findings about the voluntariness, intelligence, and your, um, whether it's knowing voluntary and intelligent, your decision to testify. So whether, whether I give consent. That's not the legal determination that I make. It, it is simply something that is your choice. Um, I will honor your right not to testify. Obviously, that's a constitutional right. I will honor your right to testify. That's also a constitutional right. And the jury will be advised one way or the other. There's a jury instruction on that. Um, did you hear me advise you of all of this? I'm informed. All right. Okay, let's bring the jury out then. and We can kind of tidy up the record and then we'll break. Judge, may I remove that uh, exhibit, please? Uh, I think they're right there, so let me just take it. All right, it's happening. Jury already coming out. Yeah, I'll just stick with it. Okay, so go on and sit it back jury. down. Thank you. Subject matter jurisdiction still hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. Should be proven at some point.
do not do that for us. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. <coughs> All right, then I'll turn to the state. Any uh, additional evidence at this time? State has no additional evidence, Your Honor. Uh, may we make a reference to the exhibits? Go ahead, please. Your Honor, uh, we believe that the uh, court has admitted all exhibits that have been offered, uh, with the exception of one prior ruling on Exhibit 6. Uh, I don't know if you want me to list them all by number, or uh, <coughs> there are, it's 1 through 6, 78, 1 through 178, but there are some numbers missing because we chose not to uh, uh, offer those exhibits. Anything specific as it relates to the most recent testimony? Most recent testimony we, with uh, Detective Casey, we moved 177 and 178 and one, I'm sorry, 175, 150, 151, 88, and 89. And believe those were admitted by the court. That's my recollection as well, but for the jury, um, exhibits 150, let me start over, exhibits 88, 89, 150, 151, 177, and 178. If I didn't receive them during the testimony, I'm receiving them now. And 175, which was the still photo. Thank you. Sorry, I had a scribble on my pad. And 175. And 13 and 14. Those are okay. the outliers. I apologize. I believe those were received as well, but if I can state it. They was already received. Yeah. I appreciate that. I just want to be thorough for the record. So 13 and 14 were received as well. State have any additional witnesses to call at this time? Uh, no, Your Honor, at this time, the state rests. All right, thank you. All right, then at this time, we are going to break for uh, the lunch hour. Um, I am going to... I'm going to have everyone uh, come back at 1.30. It's a little bit longer, at least uh, I'll, that's what I want to do for the lunch hour today. So all rise for the jury. Thank you, be seated. Mr. Brooks, anything from you at this time, given the state is now rested? What you mean? I'm asking you the question. Do you have any requests at this time now that the state has rested? What requests per, and pertaining to what exactly? I'll ask the question one more time. Do you have any requests to make at this time now that the state has rested? I don't understand what, what you mean by that. That's why I'm trying to get clarification. I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm simply asking the question. Do you have any requests to make at this time now that the state has rested? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. I, I, I don't understand what, what would that be pertaining to. I, I, I can't give I you legal know. advice, sir. I'm just asking the question to make a record. Do you, I'll ask you one more time. Do you have any requests to make now that the state has rested? I don't understand. All right. The other thing I want to do when the jury comes back out is you will recall I read instruction 101 at the very end of the preliminary jury instructions that just has to do with opening statements. I will read, read that with the caveat. It will just say that the defendant will now make his opening statement. The purpose of an opening statement is to give... <laughs> Uh, the parties an opportunity to tell you what they expect the evidence will show you so that you will better understand the evidence as it is introduced during the trial 
I must caution you, however, that the opening statement is not evidence. So I'll read that if it's appropriate, given the, that Mr. Brooks deferred his opening statement until the start of his case. Um, with that, we will take our lunch break. It's 12.09. If you could be back here at 1.25 and be ready to go at 1.30 with your opening statement. I got a question. Go ahead. Do I get to present exhibits and stuff like that too and admit them into evidence? Say, at what point are we talking about? Do you want to use exhibits that have been received during your opening? Is that what you're asking me? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying if I got my own stuff that I want to uh, offer into evidence, which is, which is a question I asked previously. Do you believe and, the state has all of those documents that they might be able to assist with? Or are they new documents? I don't know what you mean by new documents. Are they documents from the discovery that you have? They documents of, of my filings and stuff like that. I'm sure they have copies of everything that I filed. I guess without knowing specifically what you're referring to, sir, I did give you the admonition previously that you are prohibited from discussing subject matter jurisdiction during your opening statement. It's not relevant. I'm not referring to the opening statement. I'm referring to things that I want to offer Give me an evidence. example, please. I have, I just did. I said I have filings that I want to offer into evidence. That's too general, sir. I need a specific example so I can answer the question. What are you referring my, to? My filings. Everything Which that I filing, filed. Which sir? Every one of them. Well, they have to be relevant, number one, to the proceedings. Okay, number two, I don't know specifically what you're referring to. Um, you can't offer testimony of yours through an exhibit. That would be hearsay. So you'll have to testify if it's your statement that you're referring to. I'm not referring to my, I didn't say anything about testimony. I said I'm in general based on what I've seen thus far. So um, are you talking about during your opening statement or during the course of the questioning of the witnesses that you're calling? Your Honor, with all respect, I just clearly said filings that I filed. Mr. Brooks, if I understood, I'd answer. I don't understand what you're asking me. You need to be specific. I, I filed a, a number of documents. <clears throat> I think that's on well, the record. Without knowing I what you're referring to, then my answer is no. But again, well, I guess I'll have to wait and see as to when you seek to admit them, whether there's any objection or not, and whether they're whether they comply with all of the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure. That's the best I can tell you at this point. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. They, they will only be relevant to obviously the, the, the matter. They, they will be relevant I, to anything I, else. I can't answer that anymore. We're going to take our lunch break. It's 12-12. We'll see everyone back here at one twenty-five. We are in recess. So I'm not allowed to offer anything in the evidence? For the record, I never said that. We are in recess. So I'm, I'm trying to understand.
session. State versus Brooks appearances are as they have been. And Mr. Brooks, I presume you're ready for your opening statement. Uh, just one second. And for the record, I don't consent to that name, Your Honor. <coughs> Noted for the record. I intend to have the jury brought out. I presume you're ready to go. Having a slight issue finding. Can you sit up because it's I'm not hearing you very well so that the microphone picks you up, please I'm having a slight issue uh, locating some of the files that I need. That's what I was trying to say. All right We'll take a take a moment. You can look tell, tell me when you locate them. Okay Your Honor, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. The the uh, the files that I'm attempting to locate are uh, pertains directly to uh, the witnesses that I will be calling. Um, I'm not sure what witnesses are here today. Well, let's do this. Um, I'd like you to at least do your opening statement, bring the jury and do that. We'll give you an opportunity to look again. I can have the state write down who's here. I believe it's based on what you told them. And then we'll, if there's still something you need at that point, um, but I'd like to at least bring the jury out and start with your opening statement, okay? Well, just so I'm clear, I didn't, I didn't give a specific order in, in, you know, who I will be calling by specific order. I, I gave uh, a generalization of uh, sure, I'll who would be state. sorry who who would be called on what day. Why don't I have the state write down who's here presently, and then you can make that determination. That, but at least let's go with the opening statement. Okay, that, that's what I was trying to get at. It, it would help to know who's actually here today. Before you make your opening statement. Well, so I know if if they're not here, then essentially I can't call them. Let's address that after I'll have the state write down who they know to be here now or who's coming this afternoon, because there might have been people here this morning. I believe they're still here, but I'll let them write that down for you so you can better prepare. Uh, but at this point, I, I would like to bring the jury out for your opening statement. I presume you're going to give one. I am. Okay. Then let's, I'll have the jury brought out, okay? Subject matter jurisdiction? Um, my prior written decision stands. I will not be addressing that further. Your objection is noted, um, and I will be continuing with the trial. Is it verified proof for the no, record? Sir, I don't believe I need to do that, or that the state needs to do that as well. I, I believe your statement about that is a misstatement of the law, 
and I do not intend to pursue that further. Can you show me lawful law that says that? I gave you a written decision. I have done that. Can you show me lawful law that verifies that? Sir. For the record. I gave you a written decision. You that can, I accepted for value in return for and value. And that's, what, that's was, how I'm going to answer that. So let's not verify um, proof. We still, we still aren't. Sir, there is no requirement in the law that the state or the court established that. So Actually, your there is. All right. Actually, there is, Your Honor. Subject matter jurisdiction so has please, to be proven for the record. It has to be not. proven. It has to be proven. You know that just as well as me. Mr. Brooks, you know that. please do not make statements that mischaracterize the law. You know it has to be proven Or that impugn the, the integrity of this you court. You know it has to be proven the on the record. Here. You know the jury is advised to disregard the statements that Mr. Brooks is making regarding subject matter jurisdiction. They are not evidence, and you are to disregard them. They're not presented as evidence. It just has yet to be proven for the record. The jury will disregard the incorrect statements of the law that Mr. Brooks is stating. Where is lawful law that is incorrect? Mr. Brooks, please. I am going to read one instruction. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The defendant will now make an opening statement. The purpose of an opening statement is to give the defendant an opportunity to tell you what he expects the evidence will show so that you will better understand the evidence as it is introduced during the trial. I must caution you, however, that the opening statements are not evidence. With that, go ahead, sir. Uh. Obviously, I don't have any uh, rehearsed or well, well prepared speech, so I'm just going to speak from the heart. Um, I would just like to first say that uh, I want to bring to remembrance something I, I think everyone in this room has been taught uh, pretty much as far back as we can remember is that. There's always two sides to every story. Um, and for so long now, uh, roughly a year, there's only truly been one side told of this story. And uh, I've sat back and watched um, from countless narratives that, that, that's been put out there. Um, the way this incident has been portrayed at times. And uh, finally, uh, everyone getting a chance to get the full story. Um, You won't hear me try to uh, argue facts. Um, the fact is that this incident was tragic, very tragic. That's not lost on me. Um, facts are that uh, there's still a lot of people healing. A lot of families healing on both sides. Um, and what I'm confident that uh, the evidence will show, um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. What I'm confident that the evidence will show. Is that this incident was not planned. This incident was not intentional. And this incident was never even thought about. It's easy to I'm sorry. Give me a second. Uh. <clears throat> 
think is a it's easy to look at the magnitude of something like this and form paints I think uh, <coughs> it's easy to disregard a lot of a lot of factors and I think uh, in reference to what I stated earlier it's, it's easy to forget the other side of the coin There's been a, a lot of suffering involved in this incident, a lot. Obviously, um, with the families. Community. <laughs> and uh, even the alleged, the alleged defendant's uh, family as well, there's, there's been a lot of suffering. <laughs> a lot of misunderstanding. And uh, I just want you to keep in mind uh, everything that will be uh, presented in its totality. To keep in mind. the power that you have <coughs> I believe uh that should escape your your knowledge this is this has been a long process for, for everybody What I believe is uh, when it's time for you to make your decision, all of you, I believe that, and I pray that it's the right decision. that all the factors are weighed <coughs> it's, it's been a lot of words thrown out there 
about the alleged. A lot of speculation, a lot of ridicule. Words like demon. Words like monster. I know uh, a lot of the time I've been before you, you've you see me with this mask on. <coughs> yeah, I've had my reasons for that. But I feel now is the time that it's important that you see before who I am. No mask for who I am. I think this is the moment for that. I pray that your uh, your eyes and ears remain as open as possible. I understand that you alone decide this case, this matter. power is in your hands all of you to determine for yourselves <coughs> what truth is thank you And do we have their writing materials available? All right. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, you ready to call your first, would be your second witness, actually. You need a minute? Take a short break. Um, I'll rise for the jury, please. We'll be with you shortly.
the materials that you were looking for. Let us know if there's something you need in that regard. And Attorney Apper, if you could perhaps just confer with him over which witnesses were are which witnesses are here. I'll step off the bench while you do that, and if someone can just let me know, uh, I'll come back out in like between five and ten minutes, unless I'm told to come back out sooner. <coughs> Thank you.
All right, thank you. Please be seated. Mr. Brooks, have you found what you were looking for? Uh, I'm just going to go with, uh, I'm just going to work off the list of people who's here. Okay. If that's fine. All right. You know who you're going to call first? We'll have that person ready. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. You want to let us know so that the state can assist with that? Otherwise, you can just call when we're, when we are in front of the jury. So have the jury brought out, please. Well, some of them are downstairs and some of them are out here. So it's fine. It just will take a few minutes if they're over in the main courthouse. Okay. Why don't you tell the state the first witness to make sure they're right outside the courtroom, sir? Uh, most likely Bert, Bertram, 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 Bertram. Okay. Most likely. Most likely. Do you want to give us two names and we'll have two people out there? I just want to make it go smoothly, sir. That's all. Uh, since I'm working off this list, I kind of... I wasn't expecting that to be first. Who do you want to call first? And we'll see if they're here. Well, I... <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> That's okay. Apparently, this list is who's here, I'm guessing. That is, that's my understanding as well. Not yet. Okay. Is there someone you expected to be on the list that is not? <coughs> uh, kinda. Do you want to make a record of that? Do you want me to address it in any way? Mm, no. Uh, not right now. All right, well then I'm gonna instruct the jury to come out and then you can call your first witness. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Right, you may call your first witness. Actually, your second witness. Uh, the defense would like to call the plaintiff state of Wisconsin to the stand. Your Honor, I object. The objection is noted. It is sustained. Call your next witness, please. Reason for the sustain? Not relevant. And you haven't named a person to go along with that. Uh, the subpoena was accepted, Your Honor. I'll take the issue up outside the presence of the jury if necessary. Call your next witness, please. Well, I would like to make an oral tennis motion to dismiss for failure to appear by the plaintiff and for failure to state a claim from which relief can be granted. I will take that up outside the presence of the jury. Next witness, please. So is the state not present? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to address that any further. 
while the jury's present. I'll take that up outside their presence. Call your next witness, please. Uh, the defense calls Nicholas Kirby. All right. Nicholas Kirby. Is that a witness who's in the hallway? Do we know? I don't believe in the hallway, but we will have him brought over, Your Honor. All right, thank you. It'll be just a moment or two while we wait for that witness to come into the courtroom. <coughs> Sir, would you please make your way to the witness stand? It is up one riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's across from me, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record, and then to spell each. Go ahead. Um, first name, Nicholas. Last name, Kirby. N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S-K-I-R-B-Y. Great. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Your witness. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kirby. How are you today? I'm here. Uh, what do you do for a living? Mostly temp work. Um, do you recall the events of November 21st of 2021? All too well. And what were you doing that day? <coughs> what time of the day? Uh, around 3 o'clock-ish. 3 o'clock-ish. Around 3 o'clock, I was walking with Corey around Waukesha. Earlier, well, yeah. And uh, you made reference to walking with Corey. Who, who is Corey? Corey is a friend of Miss Patterson's. And would it be fair to say that it's also a friend of yours? Mutual friend, yes. In reference to Corey? Yes. Oh. And what were you doing? Walking around Waukesha, she was waiting for Miss Patterson to get done meeting with Mr. Brooks. You? At 3 o'clock? Around 3 o'clock. It's around that time. I had, I had advised her not to go meet with Mr. Brooks. Uh, you made reference to uh, Mr. Brooks. Uh, who's that? That would be you. And... Why would you say it would be you? That's you. Because that's your name. And you were privy to that information at the time? I was privy to the information about you about a week prior to this incident. About a week prior? And during your walking around, uh, what were you doing with Corey? walking like literally walking we went from one store to walking around downtown after erica told us she was going to be going to meet with mr brooks that would be you 
I had advised her not to do it because it was a bad idea and I was in fear for her safety. You made reference to going from one store to another. What stores are you referencing? Dollar General and Speedway. Did you go anywhere else? No. Did you ever go to a park? No. You made reference to knowing about a Brooks a week prior to these events you said? I didn't I didn't know everything about him. Ms. Patterson had showed me his rap sheet, if you will, and a picture of him, and that was about it. I had heard prior uh -huh. I'm gonna advise the, I'm gonna stop the witness unless you want him to go there, not to discuss what may or may not be uh, conduct of Mr. Brooks prior to November 21 of 2021. Okay. With that understanding, go ahead and ask the next question. You, you made reference to a picture you, you were shown? Just a photograph with a rap sheet behind it. And at some point, did you and your mutual friend, Corey, meet up with Ms. Patterson? Yes. <clears throat> did you recall where that, were, where that was? Corey and I were in the uh, Dollar General area of Waukesha, which is between East and Broadway Street. We were walking towards, or away from Dollar General, towards where Erica had said that she was being assaulted and attacked. And do you recall where that area was yes where was that area on white rock avenue right across from white rock elementary in front of the red apartments across from that area uh, red apartments yes do you know what those apartments are called i do not know the name i'm guessing they're called white rock apartments And do you know if there's a park in that immediate vicinity? There is a park there named Frame Park, yes. <coughs> Did you ever go to Frame Park? No. We were in that area near the park where the elementary school is and the apartments are. About what time did you and your mutual friend Corey meet up with Ms. Patterson? Ms. Patterson called me and said that she was... About what time was the question? About what time? And I'm getting to that. Well, I'll you direct mean? the witness answer to this question specifically. What time? Um, honestly, around whenever, what time the parade started. Would, I would have to say like dusk. I honestly don't, I don't wear a watch, so... Sorry, I don't remember the time. But if I had to put it at a time, I'd probably say about 4.35ish. Let's back up a little bit. Around what time did you and your mutual friend Corey first hook up that day? I had worked that whole day, so we didn't meet up until I was done working, which was probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock. And at some point, you received a phone call from Ms. Patterson? Yes. You yourself? Yes. And then at that point, what did you do? When she told me that she was in trouble and she needed help, I went to her aid. Which means I took off from where I was near Dollar General and ran to where she told me to go.
when you got there, what did you see? When I got there, well, halfway towards White Rock Elementary, I stopped a police officer at a barricade and I let him know that a woman was being assaulted in a vehicle. And do you recall um, giving a description of who may have been assaulting your friend? No. Why not? Because at that point in time, the description didn't matter. I had the identity of the vehicle. So I told them you need to be looking for a red SUV with a woman screaming out of it. And how did you come into the knowledge of the description of the vehicle? Because I saw the vehicle. At what point did you see the vehicle? When Corey and I were walking up White Rock, White Rock Avenue on the <coughs> apartment building side of White Rock, which would have been my right if you were walking towards the train tracks that crossed White Rock. On my left was White Rock Elementary. I walked past the red vehicle, didn't realize that she was in that vehicle. Then Corey and I crossed the street to White Rock Elementary and started walking down the sidewalk. And I heard her scream, Miss Patterson scream. I don't remember exactly what she said, but she screamed and I knew it was her. So I walked back across the street and escorted her across the street over to White Rock Elementary. I don't think that's what I <laughs> I'm just giving you full description. Um, <coughs> let's back up a little bit because that, that doesn't make sense. Um, you stated that you had a description of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. The question was, how did you, how did you learn of the description of the vehicle at that point? Ms. Patterson told me over the phone that she was in a red SUV. There aren't many red SUVs with young women screaming for help in Waukesha. So I'm, so I'm assuming, because you made reference to uh, stopping law enforcement before arriving to the scene, would that be fair to say? Yes. So I'm assuming somewhere in the time of you stopping the law enforcement officer to report what you were being told and then actually walking past the vehicle as you said you did and then hearing this and all this. Did you give a full report to law enforcement? At the time when someone was in help and needed help immediately, absolutely not. I said there's a woman being attacked in a red SUV, you need to call for backup. Now. And, and then you just ran? And ran then I away. ran towards the person that needed help. Did you at any time give, uh, give a more detailed report? That evening? No, not that evening. Did you speak with any more law enforcement that evening? Yes. Do you recall whom that was? I do not recall the officer's name that showed up in the SUV coming down White Rock in the police squad SUV. I don't even know the name of the officers that turned into frame cart <coughs> um, and went to the boat launch instead of where Miss Patterson <coughs> myself and Corey were. But yes, I did speak how, to an officer. How would you, how did you come into the knowledge of where officers turned and, and went? Because me, Erica and Corey were arguing with Mr. Brooks on the side of the road of White Rock, right in front of White, bleh, right in front of White Rock Elementary, and the officer that 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 I had stopped at the barricade when we were coming to Miss Patterson's aid had radioed for backup, and obviously given them description of a vehicle, the vehicle that I had described to them, the red SUV. That backup came, but they went to Frame Park. They did not go to where we were on. 
White Rock. Any idea why they went to Frank Park if you s specifically told them a description of a vehicle and where it was located? I did not tell them where the vehicle was located because at first incident, Mr. Brooks had taken off in his SUV. In the, in the police report, and is it fair to say that the, the officer that took your report was writing down what you told them? Do you mean the officer that I alerted about the trouble in the SUV? Well, let me back up. On the next day, the 22nd of November of 2021. Did you speak with a detective at that time? Yes, I did. And during that interview, were they writing down what you were saying? I believe so, yes, but I, leave, I believe it may also have been recorded on tape. I'm not sure. yourself recall stating to the detective that your friend Miss Patterson was being assaulted somewhere near the area of White Rock School? Objection leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. I'll just caution <clears throat> Mr. Brooks about leading questions since it's his witness, but this particular question you can answer. Uh, yes, I mentioned that I had received a phone call from Ms. Patterson and that she was being assaulted while in a vehicle. At any time, did you identify uh, White Rock School? I identified the street, which is named White Rock, the apartment buildings and the school as well, and as well as Frame Park. So you did identify Frame Park? I identified the entire ge geographical area. And at some point you said you heard your friend Miss Patterson screaming? Yes. And do you recall what she was screaming? I, I said do he recall? Um, as for the question, he's asking did he hear? So you may answer. It's a yes or no. I do not, yes, she screamed. Do I remember what? She was trying to say, no, I'm guessing it would be help. I'm in trouble. I would assume that that's what a person would scream when they're in trouble, is for help. Do we still have the uh, exhibit f with the footage from the White Rock School available? The security footage? The security footage, I'm we, sorry. We do. Would the state be willing to pull that up? <coughs> 
I guess I need the defendant to identify which exhibit he would like us to publish. There's three and four. Door one and door two. What I have. You, you, I'm sorry, you say do Exhibits um, three and four have been received. One is of the white rock door one, the other is white rock door two. I believe those are the videos you're referring to. Uh, let's try door two. Okay, that's exhibit four. Let's just put it up for the witness initially, make sure it's the one Mr. Brooks wants. I appreciate the state with their assistance. Uh, can you see that on your monitor, Mr. Brooks? Is this the one yeah, you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, I can see it. I believe there's two clips from this, but um, go ahead. Can you, this this one is roughly seven minutes, so I, I would need a little bit of it played, if possible. <coughs> it's been um, received, so go ahead. It'll be published, so everyone can see. Well, b before it's published, can you show it to the uh, witness? That's fine. We'll just play for the witness then. I'm sorry, I should have said that before. It's playing, so we'll let it go. Let us know if there's a point where you want it stopped. Okay. I'm not sure if this is the video you're looking for, though. So it might be, I think it might be door one. No. Oops, exhibit three. No, maybe not. Let's watch. I could be wrong. I was kind of thinking that, too. Take a look. Of course, none of our statements well, right now are any kind of evidence. I just, uh, we're just okay. trying to get to the right spot. Um, can you? Pause right now at 105. 105. Can you, can you back it up a few seconds? Not not two or three, but maybe five seconds, six seconds, maybe. It's at 59 seconds. The witness. It is on the witness stand, by the way. Just so you're aware. Okay. He's watching it. Uh, can you play from here? I don't think it's playing. It's, it's, playing. it's playing. Oh, okay. Pause right there. From what you can see in this video, <coughs> do you see anyone get in or out of the vehicle that you that you see on your screen? Miss Patterson has just exited the vehicle. Just for the record, the video was played. It's exhibit four from 56 seconds to a minute 21. Go ahead. Uh, I didn't hear, I didn't hear the, the answer. Miss Patterson was the one that exited the red SUV. You saw someone exit? Yes. Can you wind it back? To what? Again. Uh, Do to, you want it back to 56 seconds? No, to, to 105, where it was paused the first time. Okay. Thank you for attempting to do that, Ms. Gussie. It is paused at 1.05. Do you want to play from Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Pause. Again at 121. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you see anyone from 
and the video that you're being shown now from about the one minute and five second mark to where it's paused right now at one minute and 21 seconds did you observe anyone get in or out of the vehicle i'm going to take back what i said earlier apparently according to this video she did not exit your vehicle she was behind the white rock sign that's why i did not see her did you see anyone get into the vehicle later on within the incident on, yes on the video that you you are able to view right now from the one minute and five second mark to the one minute and 21 second mark did you observe anyone get into the vehicle no <coughs> can you uh publish for the jury you want to replay it again yes go ahead we'll start at the close to the minute mark as possible again is that where the defendant would like it started uh, around the 105 with around that area. 105. Is it four? I know we have to wait for the jury, right? Okay. And then you want it to the minute 21 mark again? Yes, right, if okay. if I may. Go ahead. And at that time, were you already in, in route to where you believe your friend was being assault, uh, assaulted at? Objection calls for speculation. This defendant has not even put this witness at this location at this time. He's just having him testify about right. what he's seeing in video. I understand the objection. It's sustained. Please establish uh, some foundation for this witness being present at that location for were you, more information about the incident. Were you present at, at this time? We were on White Rock Avenue, but we were not in the general location of the school as of yet, as of that point in time. So to your recollection, you didn't see anything that you're seeing right now or, or on this video, you did not see the, the day of the incident? No, I definitely saw Miss Patterson in a red SUV that day. Did you see? At this specific time, no. Because I was down the road on White Rock talking to an officer who was manning the intersection of Hartwell and White Rock. And reporting at that time. Can we play a little bit more? If I may? Objection as to relevance. If he wants to direct the video to a certain time that and he would like to ask this witness about that particular time that the witness saw that, that's fine. But he's, he can't go through each video and say and ask general questions. Um, there's only been one video that's been shown. I'm going to give Mr. Brooks some leeway on this. The video is to be played from this moment and then Mr. Brooks tell us when you want it to stop. Okay, what, what I'm attempting to do for the record, Your Honor, is... Just play the video and you okay. can ask your question. All right. Go ahead. Can you pause it right there? Video's paused at 138. By what you are viewing in this video right now, had you and your mutual friend Corey linked up with Miss Patterson at that point? At this point in time in the video, given from what I've just seen, that was when Erica was on the phone trying to get a hold of me. We were already on White Rock at that point in time. We were not near the school at that point in time, though. <coughs> So that was when you would, to your recollection, that's when you would say the phone call to you was made? One of the phone calls, yes. She made multiple phone calls to me, I think probably about six. 
I had been having issues with my phone that day, so it had been turned on and off multiple times. The final time that it was turned on was when I picked up her phone call, and she said, I need help, I'm in trouble, come help me. I'm being assaulted. You just That's made, when I left. You just made reference to that point in the vehicle being, I'm, vehicle, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm so drained. That point in the video was when you <coughs> you made reference to that point in the video being when you received the phone call. Yes. A phone call out of a, multiple from her. That's fair. A phone call. Um, would it be fair to say though would it be fair to say that and this is in reference to you saying that you were having issues with your phone that day would it be fair to say that you're not sure how many phone calls you had received that day or who they were from I only received 51 phone calls on my phone that day that I actually do know six of which belong to her and all around the same time all around the time she didn't obviously didn't want to get off the phone because no one calls me six times in a row unless they need some help can we continue to play from 138? Go ahead. Can you pause right there very quickly? Paused at, at 1 minute 47 seconds. Do you see in this video uh, your friend Ms. Patterson walking back in the direction that she had just come from? I see her on the phone talking to someone, which I assume would be me, telling me Mr. where she- Mr. Kirby, did. I'm just gonna, I need you to answer the specific question that's being asked at the moment, okay? All right. Thank you. Yes, I see her on White Rock on the phone, walking back in the direction she was originally Again, Your Honor, I'm going to object to this line of questioning unless the defendant can put this witness there. I don't know what the relevance of this testimony is. I well, didn't even the exhibit that. has been received. It's been published previously. Absolutely. So I'm going to give Mr. Brooks some leeway here. Um, overruled. At, I would like you to get to where you um, need to go, though. That was the next question. At, th at this point in, in the video, had you yet come into a range where you can, you and your mutual friend Corey, had you yet come into a range where you can see Miss Patterson at that point? Corey was the one that spotted her first. Could you yourself see her at that point? I heard her scream. That's what, that's what caught my attention. And you made reference to that scream being heard from inside the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes, because that's where she was when she called me. And I was still on the phone with her while going down White Rock Avenue. Even while I was talking to the officer, I said, I'm on the phone with her right now. I'm trying to figure out where she is. Can you please call for backup? So we continued down White Rock to look for Miss Patterson. Would it be fair to say that in the phone call you received, she told you where she was at and that's the area that you were generally responding to with your uh, mutual friend, Corey? Ms. Patterson doesn't know Waukesha. I knew the area she was talking about because I live in that area. Would it be fair to say that you just testified to <coughs> when you had the interaction with law enforcement that you stated you're on the phone with her right now trying to figure out where she was so would it be fair to say at that point you didn't know where she was i knew that she was on white rock i didn't know exactly where or how or how far down on white rock she was at that point in time at that specific time i did not know it wasn't until i seen a red suv parked in front of the apartment buildings on white rock that I figured that might be the one that she was in. 
It was Corey who spotted her across from the road. From, we're paused at the one minute and 47 second mark of the video. <laughs> It, it's a little hard to see houses and things of the like. Can you point out in what area the red apartment you're referring to might might be? It's a it's, touch, it's screen. A touch screen, so you can. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You can make an arrow point in the direction if that's helpful. Not good with technology, guys. Sorry. I'm a dirt digger. Okay. This is, the entrance, this is the entrance to White Rock Elementary, across the street and up maybe 20, 30 feet, there's an intersection leading from an apartment building to the White Rock campus. That would be up here in this general corner, right here, this whole area. Would it be fair to say that from... Where we're paused at in the video, we can't tell if there's any vehicle parked in that general area. You literally just played the video where the vehicle just turned Just answer around. the question, sir. No, you cannot see it from this angle. Um, can we please clear the uh, yes. arrow? Thank you. Would it be fair to say that where the video is paused now, that Ms. Patterson is not, or who you identified as Ms. Patterson is not inside of a vehicle? She is not inside of a vehicle in this video, no. Can we play it from 1 minute and 47 seconds? Go ahead. Pause there. At this point, had you uh, come into a range where you can see Miss Patterson at that point? No. The record video is paused at 2.13. I'm sorry. I, 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 it's all right. 2.13. Keep going. And you made reference to uh, your friend Corey spotting her first. Yeah, <laughs> Corey had said that she thought she had seen her across the street, and we looked, and we crossed the street once, and then we crossed the street back over. Then we crossed again for a final time. That was until later when the incident with Mr. Brooks took par took part or took place. And at this point, walking with your uh, friend Corey, had <clears throat> she alerted you to spotting Miss Patterson at that point? She said she's over here. She must be out of his car now or something. She said something along the lines of that. So we went across the street and there was Miss Patterson hobbling down the street with a boot on her leg. You made reference to your friend Corey saying she must be out of his car now. Did, do you know as you were walking with your friend Corey, do you know if she observed Miss Patterson being in a vehicle at that point? She was with me when the phone call came. So I assume that when someone tells me that they're in a vehicle, then they are in a vehicle. That does not mean that they would be in a vehicle by the time I got there. I was on foot and I wasn't walking, I was running. Can you play it from 2 to 13? <coughs> to see down in that corner. Um, Hold on, let it play. Okay. Pause right there. Is that 409? Yes. Um, would it be fair to say we see some individuals walking right here. Are you able to see that in the video? Yes, I can see it. <coughs> At that time, had you 
come close enough to the scene where you can observe any individuals in that area? I don't remember the people that were in that area. I was only focused on the one, and that was the one in danger. Could you so, no. Could you at that point observe Ms. Patterson? From my stand from my point on the street from where I was? At that time, yeah, where is where is paused at now? During a parade, no. Can can we clear the uh, circle off <coughs> Thank you. Um, we observed at some point Miss Patterson crossing over to the opposite side of the road. Yes. Did you did you see that? Yes. Any I was on the phone with her at that point. Could you observe from coming down White Rock? Can you ob observe that from where you were at that time? I was at the intersection <laughs> of White Rock and Hartwell when she said that she was by some red apartment buildings. Could you see her from that position? No, not from that far down. Can we play from four four oh nine? Go ahead. <clears throat> Pause right there. Pausing at four eighteen. Uh four eighteen, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You see the two individuals here? Yep. Do you know who those individuals are? That's me and Miss Corey. So at 409 to 418, you were able to come into view of Miss Patterson at that point? No. I wasn't. I was on my phone trying to call her back to find out where she was. <laughs> Can we clear this circle? Thank you. So at, this, so at this point right here with the videos pause for for 18 you weren't able to observe miss patterson on white rock avenue at that point I Do you want to ask answer? huh overruled the witness may answer i was not looking ahead of me as you can tell in the video i was looking at my phone trying to call miss patterson back because she was not answering her phone that scared me so I told Corey to keep an eye out looking and look for her as I tried to keep calling her. When I looked up and we got past the White Rock Elementary School sign, that was when I seen her. Would it be fair to say that judging from the video, the White Rock, are you referring, let me back up, are you referring to the sign right here that says White Rock Campus? I'm referring to where the end of the school building itself meets the driveway or the road that's that's there there's oh, a turn off road i apologize can we take that x from next to the white rock campus sign so can you point to exactly what, what you're referring to where that intersection is where i just drew that little x that intersection cuts across from the other side of white rock to the other side and leads to the um it leads to a road but also there's the frame park area there and i believe there's a boat launch there somewhere i don't know and at that point you were able to observe miss patterson i observed her walking when corey was had told me that she had seen her and so we grabbed her and started to leave to turn around at that point in time, an officer was coming to Frame Park because of the report that I had given. So you observed Miss Patterson walking and not inside of a vehicle? At that point in time, no. No, as in? As in she was not in a vehicle at that point in time when we came, when we finally came upon her. So when, so when, if at any time did you observe Miss Patterson inside of a vehicle? When she was going back into his vehicle to get her things or whatever it was that she was trying to pull out of his car, her phone or something or whatever. Can we play a video from 418? If Go I'm, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we clear the uh, X? 
continuing to Sorry play from that. 418. It's at 421, but go ahead. Pause right here. Is it fair to say from it stopped at four minutes and thirty eight seconds? Is it fair to say from the video that <coughs> two people right there are crossing the road? Yes. And do you know the identity of those two people? That's me and Miss Corey. Would it be fair to say that at that time? You observed Miss Patterson? That was when I first noticed the red Jeep or red SUV, whatever you want to call it, across the street. We had zigzagged up White Rock, going between the side going from one side to another looking for Erica. When we ended up on this side, the red SUV was parked in front of the apartment buildings. There was a tree here, and Miss Erica came from the passenger side of the vehicle around the back. That's when I heard her yell something. That's when I went over. You made reference to Miss Patterson coming from around the vehicle? Coming from the passenger side. So I had assumed that she had just gotten out of the vehicle. Do you know that for sure? If I didn't see her earlier when I was on White Rock or a vehicle earlier on White Rock, how could I know? Did you see her in, in the vehicle at that time? I've seen her come from around the vehicle. I am not actually sure if she was in the vehicle at that point in time. Thank you. I was just going by what she said over the phone. Okay. So my assumption is that she was in a vehicle. All right. Next question. If it pleases, the, if it pleases your honor, do we have a, a, a better view of this, of this point in particular? I don't know. Maybe on um, Exhibit 3, might be a, a better view of this If you have a specific part. spot to direct the state to, then <clears throat> I will have them do that, but... Can we, can we view uh, Exhibit 3? Do you have a specific spot to direct the state to on Exhibit 3? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's been... I don't know how long since we viewed that exhibit. I don't know how long it is. Just reviewing my notes, if there's a specific spot that you recall, I might be able to direct the state to that. But okay. you'll have to give me a little more information. Okay. <coughs> I think that's why I was uh, stating about the, the length of the video. I'm pretty, sure I would, I'm pretty sure I would know the exact spot. I don't know how long that video is. It's towards the end of it. I know that for sure. Can you ask your next question? I'm, you need to be able to tell the state with more specificity which part of which exhibit and at what point. Well, I know the exhibit, I just, the exhibit would be three and the spot 
judging on the length of the exhibit, would be towards the end of the exhibit. And you're sure it's exhibit three? Um, would exhibit that would be four. that would be uh, White Rock Door One, correct? That's my understanding. All right, so we're done with this exhibit. <coughs> yes. All right, turn that off. Just I'm going to just ask the state to just pre I'll preview to the parties. We'll see if we can find it quickly <coughs> on exhibit three. Yes, yes. So it's. Oh. Looks like it's four. Yeah, about four fourteen. A little, minutes. a little over four minutes. Um. So I'm. <coughs> I would say. Around about the. Three thirty-ish mark. If, if that helps. Well, we're going to just show it to you in the state, and if it helps you, then you can ask this witness a question about it. Otherwise, we're going to move on. I would say take it back to about 315. This is the footage, though, you're looking yes, for? Yes, this, this is the footage, yes. Is that where you want to start? Actually, let's go three minutes exactly. This is definitely the, the video. All right, this has previously been received. Why don't we watch it from this point forward and then ask your questions? But That's before it's played, um, oh, don't hit that yet. Sorry. Turn wait off. for the jury. Over. Go ahead, tell me what you want to do. That was a mistake on our part. It's just uh, you in front sure? of you and the witness at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's fine right now. Um, well, I don't want to have to play it twice for the jury. So if oh. you're going to question him, let's show it. It's already been admitted. So should, should it just publish now? Why don't we just... publish it from this point, play it, and you can ask the witness questions regarding it, okay? Okay. All right, so it's at three minutes. It's... Play about a minute and 14 seconds to get from this point to the end. So are we publishing or? Yes, we'll publish oh. now. Jury, if you can let me know when it's on the monitors in the jury box. That may take a little longer. Do you, uh, right now it's paused at three minutes. Uh, this does looking at this video right now uh, bring any re recollection of that day back to you? Yeah. And using the touch screen, can you identify if you see yourself in this video? Can you identify where you are? I'm right here. And. Can you identify who the other person is that's shown on the exhibit? That's Miss Corey. Uh, you can play from right Let's there. Let's clear that first and then play. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, before, before we play, could you see uh, from right there where you are, can you see Miss Patterson, where her position is at that point? No. Can we play it from right there? Go ahead. Can we pause? Um, it's fair to say that we can see you and Miss Corey running towards the area of the vehicle that just stopped. Is yes. that fair to say? Yes. And where was Miss Patterson at this time, if you recall? At that point in time, she had met up with Corey. Corey had gotten had walked ahead of me, and her and I were looking for her. I didn't see her right away. Corey did, and she said she just told me she's in a red car. 
So that's what we were looking for. At that time, was Miss Patterson inside of the vehicle? I do not recall. Well, what I do recall is the owner of the vehicle getting out of the vehicle, and that became my primary oh. concern. Let's hold fast a little bit. We observed the two, you, you and Miss Corey, running towards the area of the vehicle. Why so? Why such the urgency? Miss <coughs> Patterson is a mutual friend of ours. She said she was in trouble. I don't play around when people are in trouble. Can we play it from? It's paused at three minutes and eight seconds. Can we play a little bit of it from there? Go ahead. Pause right there. Can you see Miss Patterson? Uh, it's paused at three minutes and eleven seconds. Do you see Miss Patterson in it, in this video? Yes. It's paused at right now. Yes. Is she inside the vehicle? No, she is not. Had you seen her before that? Corey had spotted her, not me. Before that, she did. But it is fair to say that you're that you're also in the area. At I that am time, correct? Not in this general frame, no. I'm not, not, outside not, the, frame. not the not the video, but you are present on the scene. Would that oh, be yes. fair to say? Yes. And what happened at this point, if I, you recall? At this point there was a physical altercation between Mr. Brooks and Miss Corey and Miss Erica. I was more worried about Miss Patterson being hurt, so I went for her. To get her out of the way, I stepped between them as best I could, and I told Mr. Brooks he needs to leave. He needs to get out of here. Does not belong out here. Do you recall uh, if there was a knife involved at that time? No. That is a miscommunication. And I will clarify that. The Monday... Hold on. There's not a question. He'll, <laughs> okay. ask, he'll ask the questions. I appreciate that, but let just answer the questions that are asked at this point. Go ahead. <coughs> did you at any point during this uh, did you at any point during this altercation did you observe Miss Patterson get back into the vehicle at that point I observed her reaching into the vehicle for something I don't know if she was grabbing a purse or something or what not but she I she was grabbing something of her personal property out of the vehicle did you observe while her, this was going on. Did you observe her get into the vehicle? No. Can we play it from 3 minutes and 11 seconds, please? Go ahead. <coughs> Pause it right there. Did you see yourself come into the frame in this vehicle? At that yes. Point? Would that be you there? Yes. It would be fair to say that you had uh, some type of jacket on, a, a black jacket? At one at point, yes. Evening. What happened to your jacket at that point? That jacket hit the ground as soon as Mr. Brooks started going for the two women. So you, you threw the jacket off? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And what was your reason for throwing your jacket off? Well, if the court don't hate me for it, um, I'm just going to say it's a good thing that there were two women in my way at that point in time. And what do you mean by that? That means when my jacket comes off, trouble's going to happen. Especially if you're trying to assault a woman in front of me. So that that gesture was an aggressive gesture. Oh, well, that was a completely <coughs> focused gesture. Well, you did make reference to. Let me back up. 
would it be fair to say that you just made reference to trouble following you throwing off your jacket? No, not trouble following me. Well, maybe that's the wrong way to put it, but I'm there confused by your question. Excuse me? Can you rephrase your question? Oh, I, I, I will. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. You made reference to there being trouble when your jacket comes off. Is that fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that that would be, or that could be, perceived as an uh, aggressive gesture? You mean as an agent? Calls for speculation. How it's perceived calls for speculation. Sustained us to the form of the question. If you recall, who gave the report that there was a knife involved? That was not put into a report. That was a mis miscommunication be between me and an officer. I had been knifed earlier that week and had 12 stitches in one hand. I said, now I have a friend being assaulted and I need backup here. So when the police stopped and asked if there was a knife, I said, no, there was never any knife. I didn't have a knife. Ms. Patterson, Ms. Corey didn't have a knife. You didn't have a knife. Did you get a chance to see the report that was taken by law enforcement from you, from you? Well, I'm the one. You mean, you're talking about when I was on White Rock going to Ms. Patterson? No, no, no. Um, the, the day of November 2020, the, no, the day of November 20, November 22nd. 2021 you made reference already to being interviewed by a detective correct yes and had you after that seen that report from that day no You stated that the reporting of the knife was a, a mis a miscommunication. You yes. refer to it as yes. Did you at any time tell law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? No. Do you know if your friend Corey told law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? No, she did not. Do you know if your friend Miss Patterson? told any law enforcement that there was a knife involved in the altercation? She did not as well, no. And how long before uh, the incident on November 21 of 2021 had you known Miss Patterson up until that point? Probably maybe a week and a half, two weeks. I want to back up to the phone call that you received from Miss Patterson. Okay. When she called you, did she 
give you a name of whoever may have been assault assaulting her? She didn't have to. She was meeting one person that day and I knew exactly who he was because she had showed me his picture and rap sheet prior. Her child's father, the, the father of their 15 year old daughter is who she was meeting up with that day. And I told her multiple times, it's not a good idea. I have a bad feeling about this. Do you recall stating, well, actually, you testified to that here today. Do you recall stating that you walked past the red SUV that was parked? Yes. Would it be fair to say from the two exhibit videos that we watched today that you, in fact, did not walk past any SUV? I most definitely walked past an SUV that was red on White Rock Avenue. Whether or not it was your specific SUV, it was still a red SUV. Up until this point, knowing Ms. Patterson, I didn't know anything about the father of her child. I didn't know anything about his background except for what she showed me over the phone. Anything about his vehicle description, why would she need to tell me that? Is it fair to say that the video doesn't show you walking past any red SUV? If the video, is that fair to say? If the video proves that, then yes. <coughs> in the report that you... Well, in the report that was taken from you by a uh, detective, do you yourself recall stating that the alleged defendant tried to punch and push you? The, the alleged defendant being you? Yes. Attempted to. Would it be fair to say from the video that it doesn't show you being pushed or? No, it does not. It shows me pulling two women away from the situation. Any reason why you would state to detectives that the alleged, the alleged defendant attempted to punch and push you? Probably because there were three different people's fists flying and I was just trying to get the, uh, the people that I cared about out of the way of danger. So if my statement to the detective is off a little bit after watching a bunch of people get run over, I can understand why. So you were at the parade that day? I was not at the parade that day. I was in the area. So how... Trying to get back to my house. So how can you watch people being run over if you weren't at the parade that day? I wasn't attending the parade. I was in the area that the parade route was in. My street is the parade route. Did you see anyone injured that day? When during the parade. When the yes, after I walked back through that area, you saw someone get injured. I saw a red SUV take off like a bat out of hell down Main Street Did and go see? through a crowd of people. The question was, did you see, did you see this take place? With my own freaking eyes, yes. How many times do I have to say yes for you to understand it? Y-E-S spells yes. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I don't, I don't know how to... Um, are you moving to strike the last response? Yeah. Um, the jury will disregard the last response. I'm just going to remind both of you. Please answer the questions that are asked. If follow-up needs to take place, either Mr. Brooks or the state will ask. Is it, is it fair to, well, in reference to the uh, Exhibit 3 video that, that we just viewed? You're talking about the one by the elementary school? <coughs> yeah, the one, okay. that, the one that we just viewed, just uh, which would be uh, Exhibit 3. Is it fair to say from that vehicle, got me, 
video. I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> from that video, is it fair to say from that video that, in fact, there are not three people throwing punches? Would that be fair to say? There are three people throwing hands in that video. Erica, Corey, and Mr. Brooks. Not myself. If you watch the video, you will see three pairs of hands go up towards one another. Whether one is stepping in to pull someone away from another or not, hands are being brought up. Do you recall where you went after that altercation? You mean where me and the two girls went? Where me and Miss Patterson yes, and Miss Corey went? Where you and the we the started, two friends went? Yes. We started walking back. We turned to walk back the direction we had came. So taking White Rock to Main Street and then uh, cutting through the neighborhood there to get over to where the women's shelter was. That was where we <coughs> were going at that point in time. However, <coughs> things took a drastic turn when the red SUV that I have described multiple times went down the opposite direc direction of White Rock Avenue across the railroad tracks and the intersection of Perkins and White Rock and then turned back around and came back down. That is what you saw in the video here when the red vehicle pulled up on the school side of White Rock. After the altercation between Ms. Patterson, Mr. Brooks, Ms. Corey, and myself, the three of us, Ms. Patterson, Ms. Corey, we started to leave. I told Mr. Brooks, you need to get out of here. The police have been called. You need to leave. You need to leave now. You do not belong here. You're, you're I did not me. expect. <coughs> Can you strike everything that's not pertaining to the question that was asked. Actually, I'm just describing the entire event in its entirety. Uh, I, I understand. Um, I'll strike the response as being non-responsive to the question the jury is to disregard it. Um, Re-ask re your question again. Okay. Do you recall where you and your two female friends went after the <coughs> altercation? We started to head back in the direction of the women's shelter where they lived, where they were staying at the time. Do you recall at any point during your um, travels to the women's shelter, as you referred to it, do you recall at any time coming into contact with another law enforcement officer? Within that point in time, no. Except for the one that pulled out of Frame Park. Do you recall at any time <coughs> being stopped by a law enforcement officer on your way back to the women's shelter? We were stopped part way down White Rock and that was when I had told the officer because he wouldn't get out of his SUV. I had let him know that they need to be on the lookout for a red SUV that took off down back down White Rock towards Perkins Avenue or Street or Road, whatever it is. The officer had asked me if there was someone with a knife and that was when I held up my left hand and I said, no, I said, I said, I have 12 stitches from a knife injury on this hand, but this is what you need to be looking for is this red SUV. And I'm guessing that's where the miscommunication of the knife came in and I don't know where that officer went after that. And would it be fair to say that that was the second law enforcement officer that you had spoke with the, that day at that time? Yes. You are referring to November 21st. 
Correct. Okay. During that, <coughs> during that interaction with the second law enforcement officer, do you yourself recall stating that a black guy just assaulted my friend? No. Any reason why the officer would report that? Objection calls for speculation. Rounds. Sustained. Calls for speculation. Did you yourself sustain any injuries during the altercation? Mm, I ripped open three stitches on my hand, but that was more so from pulling Miss Corey away from Mr. Brooks so we could get out of there. Did you report to any law enforcement? Well, I guess that would refer to the second law enforcement officer that you spoke with did you report that to that officer no so at the time i didn't notice it i didn't notice my hand was ripped open again <laughs> until i got home so it would be fair to say that you don't know how those stitches opened up would that be fair to say no i'm pretty sure i know how they open my stitches got caught on the zipper on corey's backpack that's how the stitches were ripped out of my hand when i was trying to pull her away from mr brooks and intervene between her mr brooks and miss patterson Knowing a little bit about stitches, would it be fair to say that a wound that was stitched being reopened would cause a little bit of pain? Would that be fair to say? Objection. Relevance. Rounds. Sustained. Relevance. Did you notice any blood from the... Uh, Stitches being reopened? Didn't feel anything until I actually looked at it when I got home. Twelve stitches coming across my thumb in kind of like a fish hook type pattern. There was the two over here that ripped open and the one up here. Or actually, I take that back, the one up here. So just for the record, he's holding his left hand. He had his uh, thumb out, extended almost like an L, but with the other fingers almost like a C, and he was pointing to his left thumb uh, near, I would say, the middle of the thumb and then the, uh, the curve of the thumb where on the inside where it goes up toward the other, toward the index finger. Sorry, I have to make a now, record of all No, that's just fine. <laughs> Go ahead. So was it two stitches that opened or three? Grounds. Um, overruled. He may answer, but then move on. <coughs> it was three. And do you recall what time you made it home that evening? Absolutely not. Was it immediately after the altercation or sometime after? Or? No, I took the girls back to the shelter and then I started running back towards Main Street to try and see if I could avoid the parade traffic. And, uh,. That's when I saw the red SUV go down Main Street.
And do you recall speaking with uh, your your women friends after you had made it home that evening? Yes. Did at any time you indicate to them that you? Hold on, let me him finish the question. He was asking what he strike, indicated strike to the them. Yeah, I, I, I thought that's what I said. You can ask your question. That's what I thought you were saying too. Did you yourself at any time indicate to your female friends that you had sustained injury during the altercation? No. Objection relevance. Is it, overall, his answer may stand. In the, in the time that you had known Ms. Patterson up until that day of November 21st of 2021, had you yourself ever heard Ms. Patterson refer to the alleged defendant by a different name? Objection relevance. Grounds. Um, no, I don't know. Overruled the witness may answer if he knows. No. You mean like an alias or something? A different name. Well, okay, that, that can, a nickname, an alias. I mean, let's be specific here. Did, did Ms. Patterson ever refer to him with another name, if you recall? Not that I can personally recall, no, ma'am. All right, thank you. Do you recall if, to your knowledge, was uh, your friend Miss Corey, as you referred to her? <coughs> do you recall her uh, stating that she was injured during the altercation? She did tell me that she, she <coughs> I believe she like hurt her finger or her fingernail or something like that, but I don't think it was relevant to the incident that had happened. What do you mean by you don't think it was relevant to the incident that happened? Just relevance. <clears throat> Sustained is to the form of the question. No further questions. Before I decide whether to do cross at this time, how long do you believe it will be? Zero minutes because I have a little cross. All right, thank you. And you can step down. And we're going to take a break. Um, wait for me a second. I'm going to. I'll rise for the jury. Let me excuse the jury for a second.
All right, thank you. You may be seated. You may uh, <coughs> step down, sir. And I presume he may be released from his subpoena, Mr. Brooks. You're done questioning yeah. him? Yeah, I'll, I'll be still on All right, you are released from your subpoena, sir. Thank you. All right, let's take about a 15 minute break. Anything we need to address prior to that, or can we no. go when we come back? No, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Brooks, work with the state, please, for the next witness. We have them available. <coughs>
We are back on the record. It's 358. Appearances are as they were before. Jury is coming into the courtroom. Subject matter jurisdiction. Your request, as I understand it, is noted. The objection is noted. It's overruled. We'll continue with the questioning of a witness. You may call your next witness as soon as all the jurors get in the jury box. All right, thank you. Please be seated. <coughs> Go ahead, sir. You may call your next witness. Uh, defense calls Heather R. Reamer. Thank you. If you would please make your way to the witness stand when you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. It is up a riser. Be mindful of that. And then my clerk, Teresa. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Thank you, ma'am. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Heather Reamer, H-E-A-T-H-E-R-R-I-E-M-E-R. -E 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 Thank you. Go ahead, sir, your witness. <coughs> hey, good afternoon, Ms. Reamer. How are you feeling today? I'm okay. Um, I want to direct your uh, attention to the evening of November 21st of 2021. Uh, do you recall what you were doing that evening? I was at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. And do you recall who you were with at the parade? I was with my husband and three friends and one of their children. Um. About what time, if you recall, did you and your family arrive? Um, right before it started, we were running late, and then we, by the time we got to where we were seated, it was um, right before it started. I I don't recall exact time. Do you recall? Do you recall where uh, you and your family were positioned uh, along the parade route that evening? Um, at the time, I don't remember, but. Um, I later found out that it was the Historical Society. Um, what do you recall weather-wise that evening? Was it a pretty chilly evening? If yes. You, if you recall? Yes. Uh, pretty windy? Yes. Um, so I'm assuming at some point um, you observed a, a bit of commotion. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And do you recall what that commotion was? Um, everyone running around was the biggest commotion. Um, at, at, at that point, um, did the area you were positioned in get pretty loud, chaotic? As, yeah, screaming gets loud. Before, do you remember what you and your family were doing uh, directly prior to the uh, parade that evening? I don't recall. At the point you uh, uh, observed this uh, commotion, 
what did you do from that point? Started running. Um, I'm assuming with you, you and your family all took the same course course of action. We all ran, yes. And where did you run to? Away from the parade route. I don't. I'm not familiar with streets. I'm thinking it's East Avenue. We ran down that road. Um, would that be a side street connected to the? Lane parade route or? Yes, it was a perpendicular route. Um, do you recall if that side street was barricaded in any way? I don't recall. Do you recall if there were any law enforcement officers stationed at that side street? I don't recall. Did you, uh, at any time during the, the commotion when you and your family were at the parade, do you call seeing anything that uh, drew your attention in any way? Yes. And do you recall what that was that you saw? A red Ford SUV driving through faster than all the other cars in the parade. And what did you observe this vehicle doing at the time that it caught your attention? It was honking. Uh, well, I heard honking. I'm not positive if it was the red SUV or another car of 13. Did we you notice any other vehicles around the vehicle you saw, following the vehicle you saw? Following, no. It it passed a float that had a vehicle <coughs> in the parade so it was by another vehicle yes and it was by it was passing the the other vehicle you're referring yes. to correct <coughs> and you stated a uh, uh, reference to honking um In your opinion, strictly your opinion, why would a vehicle honk its horn? <clears throat> to alert somebody. Do you recall uh, when the, I'm assuming at some point the vehicle passed the position where you were, would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time during the vehicles passing you, did you see who was driving the vehicle? No. Uh, did you notice if they were uh, intense to the vehicle as far as windows? Can you speak up a bit? Oh, I don't recall. Thank you. Do you recall if you were able to see into the vehicle? I don't recall. Do you recall if you got a chance to catch the license place number of the vehicle? I, no, I didn't. And from your recollection, when the vehicle passed you, were the windows up or down? I don't recall. And did you at some time uh, report what you saw to law enforcement that evening? That evening, I did not, no. 
Did you at any time report what you had saw that evening to law enforcement? Yes. And do you recall what agency that law enforcement officer was from? I, I don't recall. I'm going to assume Waukesha, but I don't, I don't recall. And during the course of reporting what you saw, was it more of a, a recorded interview or were they writing down what you were telling them? I was on the phone, so I don't know what they were doing. Okay. Do you recall uh, if that was in the days following the incident or a little longer after that? It was after the incident. I don't know how long after. Upon arriving at the parade that evening with your family, um, did you notice any of the side streets barricaded in any way? Any of them? Yes. Do you recall if there were law enforcement officers at those barricades, barricaded side streets? I don't recall. Do you recall about how long the parade had been ongoing before you saw this vehicle? I don't recall. <coughs> and from, from that point, did you and your family immediately leave the parade and head home? Or? We left, we didn't head home. <coughs> did you or did you or any of your family members uh, suffer any injuries during this incident? No. At any time after the incident, do you recall seeing any uh, uh, news reports related to this incident? Yes. Did you keep up with those reports or was it just that evening or the days? Uh, just a couple days within whatever was right immediately. I. I'm not a person to watch the news. <laughs> and after that uh, initial phone conversation with law enforcement, did uh, any more law enforcement officers <clears throat> follow up with you about the report? No. Did you yourself follow up with law enforcement after that no. initial report? <coughs> Did you yourself observe the vehicle that passed you during the parade, did you yourself witness anyone injured by the vehicle? I don't believe so. Uh, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Any uh, cross? Yes, briefly. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Reamer. Thank you for being here today. Yes. Um, 
I'd like you to take a look at the man seated to my right, table to your left, uh, Mr. Brooks. You ever seen that man before? Said to be in court that name. Noted, overruled. Yes. Tell us about when you've seen Mr. Brooks before. Objection, leading. Um, it's cross exam, so it's proper. It may lead. You may ask. You may answer. As we were driving to the parade, um, we were coming to a stoplight, and we saw the red SUV coming down the wrong way on the road, and um, I, I slowed down because the car in front of me started to back up to let him through. This took place outside of a gas station, is that correct? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that we display for everybody exhibit number seven. It's previously <coughs> been received and published. Go ahead. Objection to uh, relevancy. Exhibit seven has previously been received. Overruled. Is it relevant to this particular witness? Yes, it is. Yes, go ahead and publish, Madam Clerk. Ms. Reamer, can you see the, uh, the map depicted on the screen in front of you? <coughs> We're looking at the intersection of North Street and Barstow Street. Does that look correct to you? Yes. And is this the gas station that we're talking about? Correct. And you were parked on North Street facing southwestbound at the time. Is that right? Objection. Speculation. Overruled. The witness may answer. Is that the way of traffic? I don't know. I well, let's assume, the... based on these arrows here. Yep. That... Objection. Speculation. Yep. <coughs> um, they're on the map. Overruled. Her answer was yes, and you may ask the next question. Madam Clerk, can we please clear the annotations? Sure. And you saw the red SUV that we've been talking about come the wrong way on North Street. Is that right? Correct. And what happened after that? Um, should I draw? Sure, yep, okay. that's the touch screen. Go for it. Um, so I stopped roughly back here um, as the car that was here started <coughs> to reverse this way. Okay, can we please... Let's get a screen grab of this, please, uh, Your Honor, and mark it as Exhibit 7. It'll be C as in cat. Or Charlie. C, Charlie, please. It will be so marked. And just for the record, the green line was placed by Attorney Wichow uh, from, as you're looking at the exhibit, left to right to demonstrate travel of a vehicle in his question, and then the witness put the yellow mark <coughs> on the screen, and it will be received as 7C, as in Charlie. Objection, Go ahead. Objection to relevancy. Um, overruled. You saw Daryl Brooks driving that red SUV in front of that gas station, is that correct? Objection. At I that time, I didn't know. Being caught that name, and it's speculative. Um, Overruled, you may answer. Um, at that time, I didn't know his name, but yes. But now that you see him sitting in court today? Yes. That's the guy? Yes. Objection, speculative. Overruled, the record will reflect the identification as of the defendant as the driver of the red SUV she saw as depicted in this exhibit. Thank you. May we please display for everybody exhibit number 15, which has also previously been received and published. Go ahead. Can we zoom in, please, on the intersection of uh, Main Street and East Northeast Avenue? Objection, relevancy. I presume the question will provide the relevance, so go ahead. Thank you. You were sitting in front of the Historical Society, you, you testified? Yes. And do you recognize this map in front of you? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. I, no, I don't. Okay. Would the Historical Society be uh, near this intersection that I'm circling, East and Main? Yes. Okay. We can please remove <coughs> that annotation, Madam Clerk. When you saw the red SUV drive by, you testified you could not see the driver, correct? Correct. Because it was going so fast? Yes. Did you ever see that SUV come to a stop at any point on Main Street? No. In fact, did you see it accelerate as it traveled towards more people? Yes. Objection, speculative. Um, it says, uh, overruled, the witness may answer. It's yes. not like you was going to say sustain. And then I remembered you had called the witness, not the state. 
so cross-examination is appropriate. <laughs> Fair enough, though. Next question. Did we get an answer on that? <clears throat> I said yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Redirect, sir. Yes. Do you want any of the exhibits, though? Uh, I, I forgot what the one was before this. Seven. Seven. Seven was the map <coughs> with you know, the gas station. This is 15. I'm going to turn it off until you tell me you need something. I uh, need uh, Exhibit 7. All right. The state would put that up and we'll <coughs> publish it for the jury as well. When when shown this uh, exhibit on cross, you you stated you were approximately around. As a matter of fact, that that wouldn't be fair. Can you erase that um, that that mark, please? It's were clear. You, were you were you show again where your uh, vehicle was positioned? It's a, just a rough estimate. But okay. Probably right out here. And where we? When I that's when I initially slowed down. To start. Okay. Um, and you stated there was another car that uh, did a, a, a backing up motion. Can you show again where that vehicle was positioned? If, if they were at the light going this way, backing up. If you recall, or do you recall, if there were any vehicles in this space right here? There was none. Rough estimate. About how far would you estimate the distance is between your vehicle and the vehicle that was at the light? Rough estimate. I never came to a complete stop back there. It's when I started to slow down. So you were still kind of rolling forward a little bit? Yes. Because they backed up and then <clears throat> moved forward. And so yeah. then I moved forward. So I you went. didn't come to a stop until you noticed that vehicle backing up? No. I didn't come to a complete stop until we were back up at the light. I started to slow down at that point. So where did you end up? Can, uh, I'm sorry, can you erase the, the white circle? Can erase all of it or none of it? Uh, the, the white circle. Only, I think it's just all or nothing. Oh, all. I'm sorry. No so we'll start this again. Um, where did you finally come to a complete stop at? If you recall. And at that time, well, back up a little bit from, before I get to that. You observed an SUV, you say, at some point during, at some point before you came to a complete stop? Yes. And what did you see that vehicle do? Try it this way. Uh, what did you see it do after you noticed that it was coming uh, in that direction? Would that be into the gas station? Yes. And what did you see the vehicle do at that point? <clears throat> um, roll down their window and yell something at the car in front of me. Did it stop? Yes. Was it, I'm, a, I'm assuming you might know what I mean by this? Was it like a brake stop or was it a park stop? If if you recall. If you're not in the vehicle, how do you know that it's a, they put it in park? Well, a brake stop would be brake lights, but okay. Objection, move to strike. Um, I'll grant that, strike the last statement made by the defendant. But you may ask your next question. And how long were you at the light? Just a very short time. 
it turned green pretty quickly. <coughs> and in that short time, you were able to see who was driving the vehicle, the SUV, as you say, that went into the gas station. Yes. Is that the same SUV you saw at the parade that evening? Yes. The same vehicle that you said you don't recall if it was tinted or not? Yes. So at the point of seeing this vehicle at the gas station, at that point, did you notice any tints? I don't recall. Did you notice if there was anyone else in the vehicle at that time? I only saw one person. <coughs> Could you see into the back of the vehicle? I don't recall. Can you see the passenger seat of the vehicle? Yes. Was anybody in the passenger seat? No. But you don't know for sure about the back seat? No, I can't see it. Can we uh, take down this uh, Exhibit 7? Go ahead. Can we pull up Exhibit 15? Can we <clears throat> put, pull that back up? The state would please pull that up. And we'll publish that for everyone. Hold on, let's make sure the jury has it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. No problem, go ahead. And you stated that you were in, in front of the Historical Society? Correct. And if I recall, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that would be somewhere around this area here? Can we, uh, yes. Okay, thank can you. we erase that <laughs> white? So the side streets, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to tap the screen. Can you erase that? I'm sorry. The side streets would be uh, Buckley Street and North North. East Avenue, would that be fair to say by looking at the the map? Yes, that's what the map shows. And you said you don't recall if those side streets were barricaded? I wasn't at the intersection. The you historical were... society is at that intersection, but I was in front of the historical society. So would it be fair to say you were close to the side street? I was close, but not at it, so I don't know if there was barricades there. I wasn't close enough to see to be by barricades. So you stated to you ran away from the commotion. So it would be fair to say at some point you moved from your position in front of the historical society, correct? Correct. And do you recall what side street you went down to when, when you were running? We ran up to the building of the Historical Society on the side of East Avenue. We can, uh, what, just really quick, so that would be this side street here? Yes. Uh, we could take down uh, Exhibit is it 15? And <coughs> you stated that you knew that the identification of the uh, the driver of this SUV based on what you observed at the gas station, correct? Can you repeat that? You stated that you me back up. You were able to identify the driver of this SUV 
based on what you observed at the gas station, correct? The gas station, I saw the driver, yes. Do you recall what the driver was wearing when you observed him at the gas station? At the gas station, no. Do you yourself recall in your telephone conversation with law enforcement stating that the driver was wearing a red orange shirt? That was not from the gas station. So where, where would that description come from, if not the gas station? Um, I saw video footage of you in somebody's backyard. So what did you observe the driver of the vehicle wearing at the gas station? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say that in your phone conversation with law enforcement, you gave a description based on what you had seen from Footage, I guess that, that would be the right word to use. The shirt color, but your description was from the, the face was from the, the gas station. And do you recall in that phone interview stating that you weren't positive on the shirt color? Yes. Do you recall in that phone interview stating that since seeing the news that you may be getting the clothing description incorrect? I remember saying that I've seen the news. I don't remember saying that I that is why I'm getting it. It wasn't the same as when you were driving. So would it be fair to say that your description came from watching footage at some point and from news reports at some point. Not news reports. <clears throat> but you did see re this re incident reported on the news. Yes. Did you see where the vehicle did you see where the vehicle <coughs> went when it passed when it passed your position? Objection, can we just clarify whether that's at the gas station or the parade? Uh, <coughs> Sustained. Sorry for that, I'll clarify. Thank you. Do you recall seeing where the vehicle went when it passed your position at the parade that evening? Continue down the parade route. You already stated that during the parade, seeing the vehicle and not seeing the driver. How are you sure that they? How are you sure that that driver of the vehicle you saw at the gas station was the same vehicle at the parade? I know that they were both red SUVs, Ford SUVs. <laughs> were you yourself sure? that they were the same vehicle. They were the same model, same color, same make. So what is the make and model, if you recall, of the vehicle that you saw at the gas station? Ford Escape. And how did you come to that 
determination based on your observation at the gas station? Because I know a decent amount of cars. What do you mean by decent? I mean, I don't know all makes, but I know this one for sure because I had a friend that had the same exact make and model, just different color. So are you yourself able to just look at a vehicle and tell the make and model? Some, yes. So it'd be fair to say some, not all. Correct. So that brings me back to the driver. You, you stated you didn't see the driver of the vehicle you saw at the parade. How did you know there was the same driver? Objection. The state's the evidence. She never testified that she knows it's the same driver. I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking how did you Rephrase your question, please. <clears throat> Do you know if it was the same driver? No. Thank you. You may sit down <coughs> and you are excused from your subpoena. It is 434, so we will end for the day. And I will read my instructions to the jury once again. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented. And I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics, applications, or tools with <coughs> communication capabilities to send any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email message, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. <coughs> this case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After this trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has any reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. 
If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, we'll see you all tomorrow morning. We'll begin at 8.30. I'll rise for the jury. Thank you. Uh, be seated. I know, um, Mr. Brooks, I think you wanted to make a more full record just regarding um, the timing of that last witness. I'm not going to put all of the details on the record. We made a record uh, in closed session just due to a privacy issue related to that witness. Um, and I uh, required you essentially to call that witness out of the preferred order that you had given her availability. Um, I believe you wanted to put on the record the in information you initially had from attorney Opper was general about her unavailability on Friday, which was the day, as I understand, that you preferred to call her, and more information was provided today. I don't want to get into the specifics, but would that be a fair characterization of uh, kind of the discussion we had outside the presence of the public? Yes, fair. Anything you want to add to that? Not just... Uh pretty much sums it up. I, okay, good. I, so I felt that it would be thinking about it as everything was happening so fast. I, I was just like, yeah, it probably would be best to, um, you know, take take the procedure that she's having into account because it, it could be. I don't want to go into that while we're still on, in the public record. Right. All right. Due to her uh, privacy rights. Um, but um, I appreciate your understanding with that and calling her. I did require you to call her out of order, but I appreciate your understanding and um, of that. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to cover at this time, uh, unless there's something from either one of the parties from the state first. Uh, no, but we would like some further direction from the defendant as to who he wants here tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon if he wants us just to continue that list that he originally provided or if there's an update and we could do that off the record your honor i don't know that we need you involved but <coughs> okay thank you then hopefully the parties can figure that out without me needing to be involved further but anything from you sir uh no i'm just gonna say with that um not gonna put them in specific order not looking for the order but we're behind given the timetable and the understanding between as, as I understand it between you and the state uh, so um, state has the list so generally speaking you've been taking about a half an hour I would say for each witness um, at least that one took about 35 minutes if we go on that schedule do you think understanding we take a mid-morning break a lunch break and um, a mid-afternoon break I would think we could get through at least three to four tomorrow morning and three to four in the afternoon I'm gonna have the parties be available for that and be ready for that whatever order but all the parties yes both you and the state so so at this point there's no telling what witnesses will be here tomorrow right well per, based on the the groupings that you gave to the state it sounds like we got through only one from each right kind one. of category that so we'll go back to the first would have been thursday morning you need to call the rest of thursday morning was there two left right. of that yes correct so we, and so let's do thursday morning and thursday afternoon the people you designated i'm going to direct the state to have here tomorrow morning that's four witnesses whatever order of those four 
five. It's five, but yes, it's five. So we'll have them here um, based on your original list. And then, how many does that leave? Because I'm that's, not that's what I'm trying to doing good about. with math this four. late in the day. Four, so four in the afternoon. Then, so my our hope is uh, to get through all your witnesses. I can't say this tomorrow for the record. One that I intend, one witness I intend to call tomorrow is not going to be thirty-five minutes. Fair enough. Do you plan plan to call that person in the morning or the afternoon? I'm, I'm leaning towards the afternoon. That could change depending on the flow of the morning. I would guess if the morning goes pretty. Can you tell me which list they were on when you gave it to the state? Was it? Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, or Friday afternoon? I didn't put them on days, but I believe they were in the maybe second, maybe the second floor of names. If you just want to tell helps. me who it is so we can prepare so that person is told to come in the afternoon rather than wait through the morning? I don't want to say who it is. Well, I want the person to be here when we're ready to go, but. They were here today, if that helps. Yeah, I know who it is. It's Erica Patterson, Your Honor. There's maybe, no mystery here. Maybe right. it is. That's maybe what I would have. Kind of who I thought it would be as well. I, so I, I'm going to have her come tomorrow afternoon. Then. Okay, we will have her here at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So right. we need to be mindful of people's schedules. Thank you. Thanks. We'll have so, everyone else here. At that's at interesting because what if that was not who I was referring to? Then you need to tell me right now so I can make an alteration to that. Come on, Judge. Sir. We're at the end of the third week of trial. So I need to keep this fair? moving along. Can we along? at least be fair and say that, that, that that's not due to me, though? Um, oh. That would not be fair to say. How? How? <laughs> the, it's How? The state said that they, would, they needed five to seven <clears throat> business days to present their case. Did they or did they not say that on the record? And there's... So how... how it doesn't matter I, how we got there at this point. I'm trying my darndest chop, chop. to get all the witnesses chop, chop. done. So I'm directing the state to have Ms. Patterson come tomorrow afternoon. If that's the other I was witnesses, to, which I wasn't, but everybody think they know what I'm thinking. Then you need to tell them if it's someone else and if you want her here in the morning. I'll say this. Everybody that was here today that didn't get called, have them here tomorrow. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five people. And you need to tell me who you want in the morning, not by the order, and who you want for the afternoon. Otherwise, I'm gonna make the order that I just made. No, you, how are you gonna make the order for me? Under 906.11, sir. No, you can't, I can call, I can call, I have the right to call them in the order that they, the state didn't have to have an order. And I'm, I'm guessing no, but Correct the state is helping but you out in terms of the order. They were helping me out with serving. And the they're subpoenas. helping you. Not so, the order of how I would call the witnesses, but the subpoenas. And I gave the state. Do you want to be responsible for calling each person tonight and telling them what time they need to be here? Or should we let the See, state here we do go that? With this again. There's, there's something that's impossible to do. That's not true. You have access to true? a phone. So, so somebody's going to answer a collect call from someone they don't even know nobody in this courtroom will answer a collect call and pay for That's a phone call from not somebody my that understanding not know. of how it works at the jail that you can that yes. there's other means to make there, phone there calls there is no there is no other way to utilize the phone well maybe i'm wrong on that but be that as it may the state is helping you out this is this is to make tomorrow go as smoothly as possible to be effective to be efficient and to use all of our time wisely. Your Honor, with all respect, I did what this I did what was asked me to do. I provided them with the list of the witnesses that I would call. I just and I stated before that I would not put them in order and the state accepted the list that I gave them. So why at this point is Who are the witnesses who are here today? Kohler, uh, Douglas Kohler, Detective Goose. Erica Patterson, Christopher Bertram, and Jason Hayes were here today in addition to Ms. Reimer. Ms. Reimer's now done. Nicholas Kirby was also here today. He's done. 
if we are going to continue to assist Mr. Brooks in getting these witnesses here, we need to have a reasonable time schedule. These witnesses don't just show up by the tooth fairy. We have to communicate with them. They have jobs, they have families. I've explained this three times to Mr. Brooks. Hey, hey, if hey. he wants our assistance, Objection. she can chill with all that. She can chill with all that tone. Hold on, hold on. I know get on that if that's what it hey, is. Hey, I know we it's been a long day. Let's, let's keep this civil. That's what I'm trying to do, but so she's she going to have to tone it down. I think we, I think both of the parties are getting a little frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. So, I'm I Kohler, Guth, nice. Hayes, Patterson, I missed a fifth. Bertram. Guth is a police officer, right? Yes. I know who Eric Patterson is. How about Kohler, Hayes, and Bertram? Are those they citizens? Were, they're citizens that relate to the parade, I believe, and post-parade. Not the DV. It seems to me that when that even with one of the witnesses taking more than thirty-five minutes, that doesn't fill up the whole day. So we need to have some other people on that list for the afternoon. So I will just continue to work in the order of the list that was provided. Your Honor, I think that's the only reasonable thing we could do at this point, or we can do it alphabetical, or we can do it by random lot, because I don't know really what else to do. By the list that was given. What was the order of the list that you were given? The first three were Kirby, Kohler, and Guth. The next line has three names, Patterson, Bertram, Hayes. The third line has three names, Reimer, Aldrich, and Lescano. The last list, has two names and then also reads the state of Wisconsin. First three people on the list you need to advise to be here tomorrow at 8.30. Okay. The next two people tomorrow at 10.30. The next two people after that tomorrow at 1.30. The next two people from there at 3.30. And then do I have anyone left over from there? No. Yeah. One more? No. If I have to go late tomorrow then I would say the last person can be at four four thirty if need be yeah i agree I, we would very much like to get through the defense witnesses tomorrow your honor uh, i don't know if that's gonna happen to well that's the uh order that i'm making in terms of the times people need to show up that gives you a range of people to select from i'm gonna have to see that uh what you're referring to then because well i trust you wrote it down because that's what i, I did I so didn't. I we didn't are in recess down. Then for the evening, we'll see everyone tomorrow at 8 a.m. Right. So if they don't get everyone. called like that, don't try to blame it on me.